Well, as you can see, it is cold and snowy outside. It's been that way all week in West Michigan as we get set to warm things up inside with one of the best college basketball rivalries in the country, regardless of division. It is Hope and Calvin on the men's side, first time this season. Hello, everyone. I'm Brett Bikita, along with former Mr. Basketball and MSU great Drew Knight. So we wouldn't miss this for anything, Drew. Icy roads, cold temperatures, lots of snow, and a lot of people here not going to miss this one tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely not. This is as big as it gets as far as rivalries go in, in college basketball at any level. And the Kelvin Knights, they're fired up. They're looking for a little revenge here on their home floor after what happened last season. And you look at Calvin comes in, ranked this week number four in the country at 14-1. and one. Impressive, especially getting out of the gate, beating some high-profile opponents. And for Hope, they were right there, a couple of top 25 opponents in December. At home, they fell short. They've been excellent on the road, and they come in at 12-3. and three. But here's the key. Both teams 4-0 and oh in MI double play. Double-A conference play going into this matchup tonight, and also number seven trying unbeaten as well. And when you look at the stretch for Hope coming up the next couple weeks, they get Calvin twice, they get trying twice. So this is a big one to try to win at a place that's been friendly for them, Van Nord Arena. Absolutely, extremely comfortable in this building. 13 and nine overall. They've won the last four on Kelvin's home floor. So very comfortable atmosphere. The night student section's back from Christmas break. They're going to be fired up, ready to get their team a, a victory. A lot of familiar faces back from a year ago, Drew, where we saw two victories for Hope ending it after they kind of got embarrassed with that blowout win by Calvin to start the rivalry series last year out in Holland. But the new faces, who will step up with this big stage tonight for either Calvin or Hope? Sometimes that is the difference. Let's start, first of all, previewing tonight's matchup. And here's Alan Babbitt, host athletic director at Hope College, sitting down with their head coach, Greg Mitchell. Greg, this team has performed really well on the road recently. What have you seen from your team that they're doing so well heading into this matchup? I, I think the road reveals who you are, and I think our guys are, are very cohesive and tough, and uh, when you have a chance to travel and just be together, you get to double down on, on who you are. And so with us, uh, we're a sum of the parts team, and I think we've got really good response from different guys at different times, and, and the road has allowed us to, to present that and, and, and be the best version of ourselves. What have you seen from the Knights this season? Balanced, uh, you know, obviously it starts and ends with Jalen, but I think they have, they have other guys that, that have stepped up and, and really contributed as well. But uh, without question, uh, we've got to do a great job of, of keeping him off the glass. He's going to get his and uh, minimizing the effectiveness of others. But um, he, he's definitely going to get a lot of attention from us. Keys to the victory today for the uh, Dutchman. The biggest key is, I think, win the possession battle. I think it comes down to, to, to rebounding, uh, taking care of the basketball. And when the dust settles, we're certainly going to always believe in the team that wants it more is going to be the one that, that, that finds themselves on the top. I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, last year's games proved that, and we're certainly excited for the opportunity. Dutchman with head coach and alum. He played for Hope back in the day and their head coach currently, Greg Mitchell. And that's what's unique about this coaching matchup. On the other side, a guy is familiar as far as Calvin fans. Alum, great player back in the day and now in his fifth season at head coach at Calvin University. Let's hear from Bill Saul. He sat down this week about this matchup with our host SID tonight, Jeff Phoebus. Joining here by Kelvin head men's basketball coach Bill Saul prior to part one of the Kelvin Hope men's basketball rivalry. You head into this one 14 and 1 and 4 and 0 in the MIAA. For the fans out there that haven't seen your team that much this year, give us a little taste of the mix of your squad, how it's come together, and uh, what we can expect. Nice mix of players, uh, you know, with some, some good senior leadership coming out of uh, Uchenna and uh, Marcus Bolt. Um, and then, you know, a group of sophomores, though, that got a lot of playing time last year, uh, led by jo Jalen Overway, who's really been good for us this year, has done really well in the interior. But uh, Owen Fernando and uh, Luca Ressler have, have done some good things. And then kind of interesting to see uh, the emergence of a uh, freshman Jordan Scott. So, um, and then a number of players that come off the bench. I mean, we have so far defended quite well, and I think rebounding has been our mainstay. So, you know, we hope to continue to see that. The scout on Hope College, uh, obviously you've been preparing. What have you seen on them on film, and what can you tell us as you try to prepare to go up against them? 
The transition game is so dynamic for them. Uh, they really get up and down the floor. Um, you have two dynamic point guards that start in Marcus Warman and Clayton Dykhouse. Um, and then two really solid interior players in uh, Tanner Wigerink and, and Gabe Quillen. Um, and so w what you end up with is kind of a combination of some interior strength but just really dynamic guard play. Um, and then, you know, their, their bench is very, very good. Um, you know, that they can go 10 deep and really not lose anything. So it's, a, it's really for us um, the ability to get back in transition but really rebound the basketball well. So you touched on it a little bit, but the keys to the game for your team, if you want to win this game, what are they? You better sprint back. Um, there, there cannot be easy baskets. We have to do a good job of controlling um, the tempo, but also, you know, the turnover margin has to, has to be similar. I mean, they, they turn you over at such a high rate because of the pressure that they put on you. Um, and then, you know, man, that, that, that war in the paint, we, we've got to win tonight. Sounds good. Well, I want to thank both our host athletic directors when you talk to John, Jeff Phoebus and Alan Babbitt, two of the best in the business. But our true host tonight is with me right now live at Van Nuort Arena and in his second season with the rivalry and getting familiar with everything and a lot going on to talk about. He is President Dr. Weba Bohr and best tie I've seen tonight, Doctor. But thank you so much for letting us be here. We're excited about it. And yes. hey, as I mentioned, the open cold temperature snow couldn't yes. keep us away from this one, right? Yeah, no, it's an electric atmosphere in here. You wouldn't know what it was like outside. Um, it's still filling up, but we're expecting a packed house tonight. We have people parking already 30 minutes ago. They were parking on Burton because everything was <laughs> filled up. So really excited. Uh, the atmosphere is amazing. Now, through our broadcast yes. tonight, we're excited yeah. to talk to some of your new head coaches, yes. new athletic sports yeah. that are a part of the mix here at Calvin, but also the one thing when you're driving on the north side of campus, construction. The yes. soccer stadium is beautiful. They got yes. to play on it, but yes. it's not finished yet, and there's going to be a football stadium eventually there. That's right. Excited That's right. about that. Yeah, so yeah, you'll see a lot of construction going on. We already finished the track over at Ganey, the brand new track. Uh, we put the soccer pitch down uh, last year for this season. We already won four trophies on the new pitch. Um, and now we're building the stadium around it and then the football building uh, next to that, which will then accommodate the lockers and everything for the football team. We're also doing a renovation of the library uh, to create much better student spaces. So. There's a lot of growth going on in our student body and so on, so we need to build to accommodate that. It's just a buzz, too. I saw yeah. Coach Fig walking in with yes. some recruits. How cool is that to have them see this environment? I mean, this is so unique, as you know, one of the best in the country, regardless of division. Absolutely. I mean, and this is, as far as we know, the biggest and best arena in Division Three. Um, and so, yeah, so bringing those recruits, and especially football players, who two, three years ago would never have seen Calvin as an option, and now Calvin is front and center. Well, thank so. you so much for having us and continued success and growth yep. to Calvin University. Thank you very much. All right, let's kick it right now to our PA announcer. They're waiting for us, Ben DeWall Malafite, with tonight's national anthem. And then shortly after that, our starting lineups. It's the first of two regular season meetings. Hope and Calvin in men's basketball. Stay tuned. It's coming up, but let's go down to the floor now with our PA announcer. Calvin University for tonight's rivalry matchup between the Hope College Flying Dutchman and your Calvin University Knights. <laughs> hmm. 
Before we meet tonight's teams, we ask that you please rise. Gentlemen, remove your hats as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem, performed this evening by Adeline Walters, a high school senior from Caledonia. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming Tonight's starters. First, for Hope, a fifth year senior number zero, Clayton Dykehouse. For your Knights, a 6'3 sophomore to Caledonia, Michigan, number five, Luca Wrestler. For Hope, a sophomore number two, Marcus Warman. For your Knights, a 6'6 sophomore in Muskegon, Michigan, number three, Owen Bernardo. For Hope, a senior number five, Tanner Wiegering. For your Knights, a 6'6 senior to Wheaton, Illinois, number 20, Marcus. Uh, freshman number 24, Parker Hubby. For your nights, a 6'4 senior at Huntley, Illinois, number zero, Ushana, Becca, Tenta. For Hope, uh, junior number 33, Gabe Quillen. And your nights are coached by Mr. Bill Saul. All right, tonight, so we are ready to rock and roll. Always a great atmosphere. Van Nord Arena, the Flying Dutchman coming at 12 and 3 overall. Calvin at 14 and 1, as we mentioned, both 4 and 0 in MIAA play. So is Trine, who's ranked number 7 in the country. And Let's highlight some key players to watch and listen for tonight. Well, it's got to be the big fellas. You got Jalen Overway on the inside, defending MIAA Player of the Year, averaging a double-double, 19 points, 9 rebounds. But on the other side, the junior, Gabe Quinlan, leading the MIAA with 9.9 .9 rebounds per game, adding 12 points per game a night uh, on his own. So key matchup inside. And then I think what's key is who's going to knock down some shots. In these matchups last year, or shooting by both teams from beyond the arc. Who's going to knock down some threes and open up the interior for the big fellas? Hope starts with a basketball opening tap. Quillen has it top of the key. Hand off to Dykehouse. Their senior leader at point guard on Zealand East. Down the lane, lots of contact. And we have a block ball. Trying to step in front that time is Marcus Bolt. One of the Chicago area connections on the drive for Hope. Tanner Wiggerink 
I tell you what, the 6'7 senior is really playing out of West Ottawa High. We watched him back in his prep days, just continue to progress, and he's one of their go-to guys this year for Coach Mitchell. Yeah, he's certainly filled out. His body is uh, growing into his body, his lanky frame, but 13.8 point, points per game, almost seven rebounds a night for Coach Greg Mitchell, and both these teams, a lot of experience coming back. They've played in this rivalry before, so who's gonna settle in early on and uh, get off to that first run? Just under 14 points per game, as you mentioned. That's fifth best in the conference. Missed them both off the back of the 10. Rebound, Calvin. First look on offense, Luca Ressler, just a gamer, runs the point for him for Calvin. But they've got a freshman they're excited about. We'll tell you as we go through the broadcast. Here's a guy to keep your eye on, Owen Barnado. Lots of game out of Western Michigan Christian. Just a pup, only a sophomore. But we saw him in the rivalry series last year have his moments. Man-to-man -man pressure, defense, shot clock down to six, backdoor cut, nice job. Oh, Yuchenna Egakez is so athletic, flying through the lane, just left it short off the window. Rebound hope and still scoreless. We played almost a minute. That nice cut right there by Uchenna and maybe a little nerves on both ends and look for hope to continue to pressure the ball handler. No real true point guard on the floor for the Knights right now. Couple of bigs battling there, local products as Quillen trying to go with the left-handed hook. Bothered by the sophomore Overway. He was the MIAA Player of the Year last year as a freshman out of Holland Christian. Yeah, and freshman of the year in the nation for D3 Hoops. So continuing to get bigger, stronger, faster, playing above the rim a little bit more this year and continuing to work on that outside shot to be that inside-outside threat. He's going to be a handful for years to come. How about Parker Hubby? One of those guys to watch. 6'5", freshman out of heart. Got the basketball there. Nice pump fake. Pulls up from 17. Too strong. Little nerves. Rebound. Egakeza up ahead. Barnado. Two-handed slam. And a foul. And this place already going nuts. Oh, Barnado went down hard. Got undercut maybe a little bit or just the bump. Lost his balance. But what a start. And I'm telling you, he's a high flyer. He is. And that's what a great outlet pass there. Barnado pops up. Gets this crap going. <laughs> And not a dirty foul there by Holt, but just a little contact when you, from behind when you go up for a layup or a dunk. Can throw you off balance. Hard fall there to, from Bernardo, but good sign to see him pop up. He's fired up, and so is his crowd. I tell you what, little NBA connection, and you see it there. His first cousin, Jalen Brown, who plays with the Celtics. Not bad as far as the lineage. This is the free throw, though. 2 0 Calvin just underway. Glad to have you along on a snowy and cold Wednesday night, but certainly a lot of heat in here. And it'll only pick up as we go through the broadcast. Live tonight on the Calvin University Athletics YouTube channel. Quillen backing down. Tries to go back to his right. Good defense by Overway. Good help by Bolt. And Wiggerink with the travel will go back the other way. Sure, one of the things we talked about in our opening segment, and you alluded to it. This has not been a tough confine for Hope coming into since Van Noort Arena has been built. They're 13 and nine here, and they won both the closing games, including the MIAA championship tournament game here over Calvin. That's not how year. rivalries are supposed to work, right? I mean, <laughs> Calvin winning on Hope's floor last year, and vice versa, Hope winning here, but uh, Jalen Overway with a deep three, and Coach Saul doesn't like that one from his big fella. Wants him to get established early on inside. Then look to stretch the D with that jump shot. I'm seeing a lot of nerves out there, partner. Yeah, both teams trying to feel their way out in this one. Don't see that as an air ball from way. Step up jumper, no by Warman from the right elbow. He can kind of get any shot he wants with his explosive attacking with the dribble that time. Trying to get in that paint. There's Overway. They push him off the block with Quillen. Here comes the double team. Kicks it out to Barnado, top of the key. Late to swing it. Wrestler, they feed it to Overway again. Here comes the double, kick opposite. Good ball rotation by Calvin Barnado. Down low to Overway with a left-handed lay it. And look at Coach Saul, loving that. <laughs> That's more like it from the Knights, right? Good ball movement, get people movement, get that ball inside, get the big fella eating early on that block, get him some confidence going. That's going to open everybody else up. Calvin has not lost at home here this season at Van Noort Arena 6-0. Nice runner by Warman, attacking right over Barnado. Tough take, and that's hope. That's hope. their advantage on the perimeter, using that quickness, athleticism from their guards to dribble drive, get to the basket. Nice job there by Warman. Now almost a step in steal. Dykehouse and Warman are so tough. Ball hawking defenders, and then can get out and transition. Warman only a sophomore to East Lansing High. By the way, the number one ranked team in the state in Division One currently right now on the boys' side. Yeah, a couple of good high school players, a couple of my old teammates' sons are 
coming up through the ranks there for East Lansing High School. So it's fun to watch those guys develop. Four to our score, and now official timeout to stop play. 16.53, as you see on the screen. A little bit of a slow start, kind of both teams a little bit of a slugfest, as we saw last year in the, the two matchups in the regular season for shooting, but. It was so weird last year to see what we saw to start the rivalry series for last season over at Hope, 81-49. I mean, Calvin, big lead at halftime, just kind of cruised their way to victory. But then the other two games, eight points here in the regular season rematch, and then seven points in that tournament final. Hope winning them both is now step-in jumper, Marcus Bolt out of Chicago, along with Agakeza, and one. And I like what I'm seeing if you're a Calvin fan as far as aggressive, you mentioned it, to the rim because they've got more size. Yeah, I like Marcus Bolt. That's what you have to do against the double team, make the defense pay. They came to double overway on that right block. Marcus Bolt, didn't, he wasn't passive when he caught that ball at the top of the key, attacked the basket. They had numbers and couldn't finish the three-point play, but good attack, good finish there by Marcus Bolt. In and out of the free throw, both teams can go deep if they want to. Kind of see how it plays out. Bolt, a senior, by the way, 6'6". On a Wheaton Academy, Wheaton, Illinois. Good connection and pipeline there for Calvin in basketball. Triple time the top, off for Wiggerink. Boy, we've seen a lot of not only misses early on with the outside shooting for both teams, but really off the mark. Overway swings and, it around. And both teams don't come in as great three-point shooting teams, you know, 32, 33% as a team on the season. So I don't expect this one to rain threes. It's gonna be more of a athlete's battle at the rim. Now a whistle, Overway trying to work in the post after the ball off the foot, and that's what Greg Mitchell is saying. As Eka Keza was on the dribble dry, dribbled it off his foot, and that takes us to our first media timeout under 16 minutes left to go, first half. It's Calvin 6, Hope 2. We'll take this timeout and come back with more as you're watching the Rivalry Series live tonight here on Calvin University Athletics YouTube channel. For decades, Calvin alumni and fans have been wanting a football program. This year, they finally got that wish. Calvin University will add new varsity sports teams to its athletics program, oh, including yeah, a football right. team. On three, one, two, three. Yes. Yes. Excited about that. Calvin University football. Love that helmet. The Knights football team officially kicks off their season, as you can see, September 7th against Overland. That's a home game. And also, first rivalry matchup with Hope. Mark this one down, November 9th. And by the way, 3,500 fans turned out at the Maroon, Maroon and Gold scrimmage during homecoming weekend this past fall. So there's definitely excitement building. I know I'm excited about it. The first ever Calvin Hope. I want to get my tickets right now. Can I do that, Drew? Hey, that's one thing you cannot say about this. Uh, both these schools and their fan bases, alumni, they love their schools, their athletics, their universities. So they're going to come out and support and uh, it should be a lot of fun on the gridiron for, uh, for the Knights. As you'll see, shots of our crowd tonight during the broadcast. I mean, keep in mind, a lot of schools were closed, a lot of events canceled tonight, but not this one. Is Overway just muscles his way up with a nice right-handed finger roll in for two. Back the other way, trying to answer. Triple try, no good by Warman. Rebound Calvin, one and done. Into the ball game now after the timeout. Ethan Crabtree, check that. That's Trevin Winkle for Calvin. Shot from outside, no good run down by Dykehouse. Fifth year senior out of Zealand East High along the lakeshore. Not too far from Hope College's campus. He's their floor general, now in a mismatch with Overweight. Bouncing it down low to Quillen, matched up with Egekeza on the right block. Spins, tries to go back to that right hand, good defense. Oh, left-handed hook, no. Egekeza holding his ground, good defense and there. Calvin is doing the job on the defensive end. One for seven from the field for Hope in this first half so far. Really locking in on the defensive end. And Nice job, Overway stepping through the double team that time. 
finishing with the right hand. Quillen needs help. We know that. And we saw that last year. I love the patience by the big fella overway. Stepping through that double team, not just kicking it out right away, looking to make something happen. Strong move. Yes, and one. That's Clayton Dykehouse's game. Loves to attack the basket that time with the bounce. A couple of new players in there for Greg Mitchell after the timeout. Ben Wager, 6'7", 200-pound junior out of Petoskey High, Harbor Springs, Michigan, Northern product. Also, Justin Mims, they're excited about this kid. 6'2", sophomore. We saw him a little bit last year, but they had such a good rotation. Now working his way in, and he has really come on at about 10 points per game out of Rochester Adams High over the Detroit area. Both these ball clubs, really good athletes. And pretty deep teams, you know. Both these coaches will say Hope has a little bit deeper bench. Guys playing a little bit more minutes, contributing contributing more on the offensive end. But uh, we're ranked number four in the nation at this point in the season. If, uh, if you don't have some depth and some guys that can really play coming off the bench. Dykehouse converts a three-point play, knocking down the free throw. Our first look at the freshman, Jordan Scott, out of Plymouth Christian Academy with the basketball there down the lane with the left hand, switches with the right in the air and puts it up and in. And that's the guy. He's really come on these last four or five games. If he can step into his own as, in, as just a freshman, start playing like a sophomore, which he has been over the last handful of games. Michigan fans might remember his dad played for Brian Ellerby back in the day. Dante Scott at the University of Michigan. But as you mentioned, coming on off the bench, and he's been given about 10 points per game in those last few games, and they've been tight wins in the MIAA. Two big road wins last week. Adrian, tight one down the stretch. They pull it out, and then also over the weekend with Elma. So Kevin ha Calvin has been tested. 71-65, I mentioned last Wednesday a week ago at Adrian, excuse me. And then on Saturday, 71-67 at Olivet College with the victory to get to 4-0 going into tonight. Dribble penetration, left elbow, they're letting them play. Kick over TJ McKenzie, who checked in. Also plays football at Hope, couldn't knock down the three. He's good at that rebound, dug out by Agakeza. Up ahead, Scott, no look pass on the backside, laying it up and in for Calvin Brady Ewing. 6'7", freshman out of Petoskey. How about Jordan Scott, the no-look diamond transition. He's liking this rivalry atmosphere and making plays, making an impact on the game in just a couple minutes on the floor. High screen, pulling up for three, but he airballed it was Justice Mims. And the Calvin student section will let him hear about it with the airball. Nine-point advantage, 14-5, great start for Bill Saul and the Knights. 13 and change left well, to go Kelvin first half. Kelvin is just at a different level of intensity so far in this game. I mean, especially physicality they're showing on the defensive end. No breathing room for hope. They're having to settle for contested deep three-point shots and not having much success. Barnado likes that baseline. Fadeaway jumper on the right side there from 12. Knocks it down, nothing but nylon. I really like his game. I think before it's all said and done, he's going to be a heck of a player here for Kelvin. The lefty pulls up, knocks it down just inside the free throw line. That's Wager. How about a couple of Petoskey high products playing against each yeah, other that's tonight? that's what Ben Wager does. He comes in and knocks down shots. He is a big guy, but he likes to step out and shoot the rock. Now a foul on the other end. They're going to get Dykehouse with the reach in as wholesale substitutions. I think both coaches have already gone 10 deep now. We talked about their benches. Guys for Kelvin, they're going to play significant minutes. Overway, uh, Egakeza, and, and uh, Vernado, they're going to play 28 to 32 minutes every single night for Coach Salt. Scott, the freshman, missing the first. Both sides now. High fives for that second unit coming in. You want to try to gain ground, as you know, when it's second unit versus second unit. You see that a lot in the NBA. We got it here tonight with these two rosters. 12.26 left to go first half. The lead is nine, make it 10 as Scott gets the second to split the pair. He'll come out now, Luca Wrestler is in. We also want to keep an eye on Egakeza, three points away from 1,000 for his career coming to this one. How special would that be? And then get the win on top of it. Opposite, nice pass that time down low on the right block. 
good extra pass, and Mims hits the short jumper. No help on the backside. Good look by Gabe Quillen. Quillen now, here comes a double team. Overway beats it baseline. Shot blocked by Quillen. Nice challenge there, and Wager comes out of it with it. Sweet up ahead there by Overway, but better defense by Quillen, not giving up on the play, using his lanky frame to go up there and pin it on the glass. Now Mims ahead to Quillen, could handle the low pass on the bounce pass in transition, and we reach our second media timeout. Pretty good pace picking up here as we move through this first half. As we head to timeout, it's Calvin 17, Hope 9, back with more as you're watching it live on the Calvin Athletics University YouTube channel. You see that? That's when I realized we can't let another year go by. I think we're good. Okay, let's go. Mom, you know where's the wrapping paper? I need to wrap something for Grandma. Oh, uh, yeah. Ready? Yeah. This is the plan to finally connect with our family's heritage. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and spend your life living. I have wanted to be a teacher since I was in preschool. As a teacher, I know that I am called to not only make an impact on the students that I teach, but to help them come up with creative solutions to be change agents themselves. That Calvin has instilled in me to be an agent of renewal in this world. And how can they help be a problem solver? How can they creatively come up with solutions to better not only the space that they are involved in, but the space that others are involved in as well? Look at that crowd, Van Nord Arena, student section jammed in here. JV game before this one. And let's look at some of the numbers. Eight point advantage right now, Drew Knight. So Calvin over hope. Absolutely, a big key stat here so far in this game. Points in the paint, Calvin winning that battle 14 to four. So even with the double team on overway, they're not settling for jump shots, attacking the basket. Eight for 12 uh, for the Knights from the field and Hope just four for 12 in this first half. On the attack, oh, it went down hard. Again, all the players on the drives have been challenged. T.J. McKenzie going to pick up the foul for Hope as Eugenia Egekeza taking his time getting up. Bill Saul saying, hey, I want an intentional foul. He said that's twice that that's happened to my players. And his teammates are calling over the trainers for Calvin University as they try to help them up. Luca Wrestler in that point. Only a sophomore at a Catholic Central High. Played for T.J. Meerman. Was a part of that state championship team back in 2021 for the Cougars. Love the West Michigan flavor, a lot of it on both rosters, but then as you mentioned, going outside of the state to bring in some other talent like the Chicago Connection for Calvin. Just a high level of basketball D3. And there's so much talent in the West Michigan area for high school basketball that these programs have been built on keeping kids home. And, you know, you look at a kid like Jalen Overway, who had a lot of options to go probably around the country, but wanted to stay home, go to Kelvin, and he's having a heck of a career so far. Egekeza gets the first. Uchenna Egekeza. We got familiar with him last year at a big game in that first game at Hope. His athleticism at 6'4", stands out, second one, bounces around and out. Rebound cleared by Wager. Boy, this just feels like Division One Duke in North Carolina with the arenas these kids get to play in, the geography, the school's so close with the campuses, the student sections, and they're always two of the top programs on the men's side in the nation at the D3 level is now a hand check and a bump called out front. Calvin students didn't like the call. I mean, the student section is as good as it gets. Oh, I man. Mean, talk about uh, kids coming out to support their school and their classmates. What a culture here at Kel. Remember, it's seven personal fouls, 20 minute halves on the men's side for college. Warman on the attack. Oh, nice dump down low. Shot blocking behind. A nice save by Wrestler. He just does all the little things so well like that. Block Josh Decker was cutting through. The junior out of Ohio thought he had an easy up and under as Scott pulls up for three and knocks it down. Boy, this freshman is fearless. Wow, he is coming into his own and no hesitation right there. Coach Saul giving him the confidence to let that thing fly, making some big plays so far in this game. Jordan Scott. Bolt with a step in steal. Excuse me, partner. And how about Scott with six to help lead the way with overway for Calvin? 
Crossover working against McKenzie. Out to Overway, out top. Now back to Scott. They got Barnado on the block against a smaller Warman. See if he squares him up. Nice spin move goes up. No, as it rolls off the front of the rim, but there was contact. Wager had to come over and got him with the body. So two coming up for Owen Barnado. Out of Western Michigan Christian over the Muskegon at Norton Shores area. Kelvin's playing some very motivated basketball. We talked about what happened last year, losing twice on their home floor to, to Hope and essentially keeping them out of the national tournament. So they've had that bad taste in their mouth all off season so far this season. So they've been chomping at the bit to get this uh, opportunity again in front of their home fans and making the most of it. And if you're Hope, they're a little bit deer in the headlights look on their heels a little bit. They got to get out in transition, try to get some easy ones and get some confidence going. They're having to work so hard on the offensive end, nothing coming easy. You have to give credit to Kelvin for their defensive pressure and intensity. Barnado with the shooter's roll gets a second after missing the first two strong. With the basketball left wing is Decker. Out top between the rings, Dykehouse. Little two-man game with Quillen. Now hand off to Warman. He'll step and fire for three. Way off the mark. Jalen Overway taps it to himself for the rebound. Outlet to Wrestler. Luke Gould walking across the timeline. Now Overway has it top of the key as we approach the halfway point of the first half. 22-9, Calvin with a great start here at home. Overway, left wing Scott comes off an Overway screen down the lane, challenges Quillen. No, the up and under with the left hand. Rebound cleared out of there by Decker. Outlet to Warman. Into the front court, back to Decker. No one picked him up. Boy, way off the mark. And again, they got the student section behind that basket, but Hope has just been way off tonight. Yeah, they've had a couple couple air balls and right into the momentum of the home crowd. Overway, low block. Here comes the double team. Bolt beats it, steps to the right to avoid the defender, but missed a shot. Rebound, Dykehouse. Dykehouse, secondary transition against Scott. Clears the way, now pull up three. That one's off the mark. Tapped out, though, to keep it alive. Nice job by Parker Hobie. Down low, Quillen. Left block against Overway. Just can't move the big fella. Ah, look at the pressure. Quillen for three. That's off the mark over the top of the backboard, and that'll be Calvin basketball. Tough shooting night, really for both teams, but more for Hope. The only thing they've really gotten as far as being successful is taking the ball to the basket. Yeah, and they, they've been closing them off these last few possessions, and... Dykehouse settling for a deep three early in the shot clock, then Quillen stepping out, shooting a three. Not a recipe for success. They got to calm down, run their stuff. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Wrestler backing down his defender. Good post up player for a guard. Steps through it, a nice finish working against Warman, and that'll force a 30 second Greg Mitchell timeout. We'll keep it right here and let, and let you know about. Something that's really kind of cool, speaking of the rivalries, there's no bad blood off the court between Calvin and Hope this year. In fact, the rivals are teaming up to give blood. It's the first ever rivalry battle blood drive. And the need for blood right now, always during the winter season, so important. And the need is here in West Michigan. How it works, each school will have two days of blood drives on or around each rivalry game. Now remember, there's four of these when you throw the women in with their two. First one for Calvin happened earlier today on campus. The next one is on January 25th in Calvin's Commons Annex Lecture Hall. You can sign up online or walk in between noon and 6. So come out and support your school while supporting a great cause. Now for Calvin, that's January 25th. And speaking of the month of January, the whole rivalry series for the regular season anyway is going to wrap up this month. You and I partner doubleheader, two different campuses in one day, Saturday, January 27th. We do it all over again. That's going to be a heck of a day of basketball. We got the men's, the women's game here at Van Orn Arena. I believe it's a 3 o'clock tip. Then we'll head out to Holland to check out the men in the evening. I think a little dinner in between for you and I, somewhere along the line. Josh Decker missing the three, rebound Calvin. It's been one and done for the Flying Dutchman. By the way, our first game of the rivalry series for the women in early December went the way of Hope College at home. So Calvin University looking forward to the rematch here. As Drew mentioned, the first game on that Saturday. That's January 27th coming up on both the athletic department's YouTube channels, depending on who the host school is. As out of bounds that time, little confusion 
between Brady Ewing, the freshman, and fellow freshman Jordan Scott. I want they want to do on the pick and roll. Back into the ball game. Yet to get going is Wiggerink out of West Ottawa. Two highlighted him as one of the leading scorers for Hope. Just been a tough night shooting really all the way around. Warman's maybe been their best bet so far. Well, I don't think anybody on their roster has scored more than one bucket. So right. Not a good sign for Greg Mitchell. And you're just looking for somebody to kind of take the bulls by the bull by the horns and kind of put the team on their back and get you back into the game, get some positive things going. Dykhouse drawing three defenders. They kick it around the horn and warm it again off the mark. Offset right of the triple try, but Gabe Quillen bails him out with an offensive rebound. Here's Dykhouse. Shot clock down to 14. They feed the post. Oh, nice job coming around. The low side bolt. Now the baseball pass ahead. It was tipped, but nice job gathering himself. You and the freshman goes up. Got it knocked away. Dykhouse comes out of there. Here comes Hope back on the attack. Leads it for Wiggering. Trying to get the senior going. Backing himself down. Nice finish with the right hand. That was classic Tanner Wiggering right there. That's good. Patience. Back him down. We got time. And good basketball IQ there by Tanner Wiggering. Using his body and his long arms to get it up and over the defender. Next stoppage in play of our third media time out of the half. 24-11, 13-point advance for Calvin Bolt going baseline, cut off and blocked up top. They were looking for a foul, nothing there. Gabe Quillen, nice bounce pass down low to Wiggering, goes up and he was hammered. Take your pick, I think they're gonna get Barnado on the baseline. That was a rivalry foul right there. <laughs> Barnado just coming down, going after the ball, but catching him on the arm and the face a little bit. That'll take us to our third media timeout, as I mentioned. 7.05 left to go first half here from Van Nord Arena on the beautiful campus of Calvin University. Our score, Calvin 24, Hope 11. And you're watching all the action right here on the Calvin Relays University Calvin Sports University, Network. A university that's experiencing great momentum. This year, students from more than 90 countries sent in applications. This year also marks the first time in the past decade where our total student enrollment increased. And this during a time when the number of high school graduates across the United States is on a steady decline. There is so much momentum happening at Calvin right now, from the success of our current athletic teams to the addition of three new ones. It's so exciting to see the school spirit that's building. And that's not all that's being built on campus. We also recently launched construction projects aimed at enhancing the student experience, including making significant improvements to our outdoor athletic facilities and a beautiful renovation of our Heckman Library. We've also been working to deepen our local and global partnerships. This year, we're working with local community partners on an initiative that aims to bridge the massive education gap that exists in a neighboring zip code to our university's campus. That last shot there, you saw the beautiful new soccer complex. That's only the beginning, folks. And then they're going to add a football stadium right next to it. And you heard President Bohr had a chance to talk to him in our pregame. Calvin welcomed more than 1,000 new students this past fall. It's a 15% increase year on year, a little bit more than that. And from all over the globe, students from 90 countries sent in applications. That's half the countries in the world. You and I grew up in the West Michigan area. We forget, really, the footprint Calvin University has and Hope College. Unbelievable alumni bases uh, locally and around the globe. So take Wigger a look at a couple first half stats here. Still points in the paint. Kelvin dominating 16 to 6 over Hope. Good balance for Kelvin. Uh, Bernardo with five. Jalen Overway with six. And Jordan Scott off the bench, the freshman with six. And Hope just shooting five to 20 from the floor. They're down 12. They should actually feel pretty good shooting as poorly as they have in this first half that it's still a still a ball game. And Wiggerink missing the second free throw. That's not like him. And the double team coming to Overway. They fed him in the corner on the baseline. And I think they're going to get Wiggerink with the foul. Oh, wow. Third foul for Wiggerink. That's why he missed some time early. And Tanner can't believe it. Coach Mitchell going to argue his case. They're going to have to come back with the junior Wager out of Petoskey to help down low with Quillen. Jalen Overway, bonus now on at the free throw line. Only a sophomore. We watched him in high school, developed the body. Nice hands for a big fella. A soft touch on that foul. Through. And the That's numbers. Good. Shooting about 70, 
75% from the free throw line, and that's key as a big fella. It's gonna get double teamed and fouled a lot, so you gotta make the defense pay. Get to the line and knock him down as he did there. Got them both, 19.7 points per game coming in. That leads the MIAA conference. And when you throw in the fact, nine and a half rebounds, second of the conference, he is a low deal with. 26-12, the lead is 14. Dykos between the legs dribble, trying to free himself. Good matchup there with Egekazu, who's got the athleticism to bother him. Coming over a screen, though, unable to knock it down. Dykos, rebound over with. Yeah, 0 for 10 now from deep. Wow. Half the field goal attempts for Hope from beyond the arc. Got to attack the basket when they're not falling. Try to get something inside. Barnado working baseline against Wager. Nothing there, pretty good defense by Ben. Back out. Now wrestler down the lane, short jumper, no. Overway, wisely just tips it back out. Battle for the rebound. Trevin Winkle in there, the sophomore out of Northern Michigan, Kristen, to mix it up. And we have a tie ball. Possession arrow gonna stay with Calvin. Barnato coming out, so is wrestler. They go back with the freshman, Scott, also checking in for Coach Saul. For the first time tonight, Dane Harvey, junior out of FHC. We know his dad saw him before the game. Great basketball IQ and a heck of a defender as we saw last year. Absolutely a blue guy that'll play two, three minute spurts for Coach Stahl and bring a lot of energy, toughness to the floor. Triple try, no good by Winkle on the right wing. Too strong, rebound Dykaus. Top of the key, lost the handle momentarily, now down the lane. Nice leave for the 15 footer, and that's money. Great extra pass that time to Parker Hovey from Dykaus on the assist. Again, you just want to get your guys going a little bit, right, as a point guard. They're still in this, right? Nothing's really going their way. Not a lot of success offensively, and still a 12-point game. Big-time charge right there. They can get a couple buckets. They'll be right where they want to be. Jordan Scott, the freshman, working against the KG senior veteran, Dykhouse, their leader for hope, drawing the charge back the other way. As Drew mentioned, as tough a night as it's been shooting for hope, you look up, you're down a dozen, 5.30 left to go in the first half. Warman to Quillen at the top. Hands off Hovey. Tried to swing it back, lost the hand, a good quick hands. Harvey, that defense, and now back the other way. Warman with a steal. Really suckered Winkle into that pass. Out top, nice crossover from the East Lansing product. Gets it back and goes up. Little contact, no. Tip in by Gabe Quillen. Up and good. Yeah, kind of a almost right place at the right time. I don't think he even had control of the ball. Kind of just swatted at it and right in, it went. So Gabe Quillen staying active in there. Now a steal. Those guards we talked about warming up ahead. Oh, Mims missed the jam. Warman though stays with it and runs it down. Hope gets another opportunity. Boy, good pass ahead with a bounce by Warman. High screen, Quillen dribbles around the left side of it and a bump. These things are starting to get chippy. Boy, Mims went up. Yeah, that's a tough one. And when you're down, things aren't going where you got to take the easy two. You got to know the situation of the game. And I'm sure Co Coach Mitchell's feeling that way too. That got to take the two. We're struggling to score, just lay it in. And I think the momentum was kind of shifting into Hope's direction, but certainly fired up the crowd with the missed dunk right there. This is not immediate timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Just a 30-second timeout called by Calvin and Bill Saul. Warman will go to the free throw line. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. That was a 17 foul this half. Now against Calvin, so hope with a couple of free throws here, make it an eight-point game. And again, we have just over four and a half left to go first half. Glad to have you along on this mid-January. I want to say a shout out to our crews. We have two great crews we work with. Alan Babbitt and his crew at Hope, and we'll work with them again on the 27th. And then our crew tonight, first time here at Calvin University. It starts with Matt Kaczynski. He's the director of our broadcast tonight. Thank you, Matt, for all your help. And some interviews that we had to pre-tape last week, you'll see coming up at halftime with some new sports here at Calvin University. Jeff Beavis, the best in the business, along with Alan Babbitt, our host athletic director. You also hear him doing broadcasts for Calvin. University for different sports, including basketball. Jeff's been around a long time and always has a little feel, a little insight on how the team is doing coming into this one. Yeah, both these SIDs, you talk Alan Babbitt, Jeff Bevis, getting us prepped for the rivalry series. And we appreciate all the work that they put in to 
the broadcast and production of, uh, of the game. And our producer to make us look good in our <laughs> ear tonight, Nate Porter. Can't forget him. Thank you, Nate. And the entire crew with all of our camera folks and everyone helping us out. Really enjoy this in our second year of the rivalry series. Warman knocks them both down. And just like that, here we go, eight-point game. Has to be a tight one if it's Calvin and Hope on the men's side. 26-18 as we approach the four-minute mark left to go. Ekekeza out top, wrestler left wing. Now they feed it around the horn right side. That's Bolt. Top of the key, over where the big fella can hit the three, and he knocks it down. Over Quillen. Even he got a fist pump from uh, his head coach, Bill Saw, on that one. And he's really developed that, starting to step out, knocking down a couple threes a game. Developing his game and Gabe Cullen just a little slow to get out and contest, making him pay. Overway's got 11 to lead all scores. Nice move that time, but a big block by Overway on the drive by Warman. Up ahead, Rustler. 3.41 left to go first half. Bolt, extra pass over. That's Harvey. Back to Bolt in the corner. Can't dial up the three there. Boy, good box out by Wager. Gets it to Quillen and in transition. Here comes the sophomore, Justice Mims. Key stretch right here. Three and a half minutes to play. If Hope can go on a little run, get some momentum going into the halftime locker room, it's going to go a long way coming back in this game. Wager, the southpaw, I know you love that partner. Couldn't dial it up from the top off the back iron. Rebound overway. And now Bill Saul saying, let's spread it out a little bit here with three and change left to go first half. That's what he does. Wager's pretty much a three point specialist, plays out on the perimeter. So almost 50% from three this season. Greg Mitchell lives with that shot, but. Still struggling to get anything to fall from beyond the arc. Agakaza with some size over Warman. Fadeaway jumper. No, had a good look from six. Rebound cleared. That time by Parker Hovey. On a Shelby, Michigan, Hart High School. Hovey. True freshman, 6'5, 225. 239 and ticking left to go. 29 18. Back to an 11 point advantage in favor of Calvin. Won the first meeting a year ago. This is the first of two in the regular season. Warman through traffic, kicks out Mims for three. Can't dial it up. Been a rough night behind the arc for Hope. They keep it alive, though. Wager goes back up. No. Battle between Quinlan and Overway. Tipped out of there. Here comes Egekeza. Egekeza knocked away from Hovey. Right to Wrestler. Leaves it for Egekeza. Up and under. Left it short. Rebound Gabe Quillen. I think some tired players yeah, out there right now. I was just going to say, partner, both teams a little gassed right now. No stop to play here for three or four trips up the floor and teams leaving it all on the floor. That's what you love to see in a big time rivalry game. Well, we never got the under four timeout. They're still waiting for it. We're under two minutes left to go. Shot clock down to 10. Quillen top of the key, watched by Overway. Man-to-man -man pressure defense by Calvin. Triple try, good! Justice Mims, wow, beats the shot clock. All they needed maybe to get that cover off the basket, just see one to fall and a great sign for the Flying Dutch. Do crew like that one making the trip over from Holland, the Hope College student section, and now a bump. And that will take us to our final media timeout of the half. 134 left to go first half. It's an eight-point game. Calvin 29, Hope 21, and you're watching all the action live right here on the Calvin University Sports Athletic Network. Big E's Sports Grill, your next destination for any occasion with incredible entertainment and amazing food that makes you want to come back for more. Family memories are made. Where sports are enjoyed and friends gather. Cheers to good times, great friends, and a place where the game's always on. Only at Big E's. Keen along with your nights of courtside, welcome you back. And you saw the beautiful construction and all the equipment on campus. So bear with the construction a little bit, but I can tell you, as you saw the renderings there, it's going to be absolutely beautiful here at Calvin University. And you can stay up to date on all the projects and what's going on and what it's going to look like, especially with football kicking off 
this coming fall. Calvin.edu backslash construction. That's Calvin.edu backslash construction. Well, partner, we played a long time. The players were tired, but what are we looking at? I know Jalen Overway starting to step out as one of those leading scorers. Yeah, he's well on his way to another double-double and hit his season averages 11 points, five rebounds, very efficient first half on four or six shooting. Uh, for Hope, you got Marcus Warman with four, and Justice Bims after knocking down that three with five, and Hope's battling, even though they're not shooting great, still just 26%, eight of 30 from the floor, but they're battling. Staying in this one, Hope or Kelvin cooling off a little bit, uh, 11 for 23, down to uh, about 48 percent from the floor. Luca Wrestler shooter's touch on that first one hits the rim and drops over the front for the second, so he gets them both back to a 10-point advantage, 31-21. Wrestler, by the way, with four points now on the night. Mims on the penetration, up and under, elevated nicely. No, but the tap was up and good by Gabe Quillen after Robert Nocek in the game for the first time this evening. Made a nice move baseline, but couldn't quite get the finish. I really like Gabe Quillen, his activity, he's a little quicker than Overway, using, using his athleticism to get that offensive board. Jordan Scott going baseline behind the back, trying to free himself, double team now. Mims almost got the knock away. Jordan needs some help, skips it over. Varnada with five seconds on the shot clock, knowing the triple try from the top. T.J. McKenzie trying to run it down, but Luca Ressler knocked it off his foot out of bounds. It'll stay with Calvin to our left. All right, really good defensive possession there by the Flying Dutch. Locking in, forcing a contested deep three by Bernardo. So build off that, got to come up with that, off, that defensive rebound and close out the possession. Eight-point game in favor of the Knights, who have pretty much led throughout the entire first half. Barnado has it, gets to the free throw line, cut off there by no check. Down low overway, here comes the double team, back out to Barnado. Between the rings, leaves a deep three, Marcus Bold. Oh, he hits it with six on the shot clock. That was way out that there, That was the range, that was 30 feet, and the high archer, the rainbow, Marcus Bolt knocking it in. 6-6, six, six, senior out of Wheaton Academy. Back to double digits, what a big time shot, heading into halftime here if they can close it out with a defensive stop. Now can Hope have an answer here? Final 15 seconds. Shot clock is basically about the same, less than a second differential. Out top, Mims. High screen, Quillen. Dribbles to the middle of the floor, leaves it now, Dykehouse. Fakes the three, wrestler comes out, and oh, a shot clock violation. And there should be, hold on, there should be some time left on the clock. That's what Bill Saul's saying, because we saw it, it was about 0 .7, 0 .8 difference. So with that shot clock violation, Calvin will have a chance to heave it the length of the floor. Coming up at halftime, by the way, going to highlight a couple of new sports here at Calvin University, talking to their coaches. Men's volleyball and women's acro and tumbling with their head coaches. Spencer Frederick and a chance to talk to. So excited, just getting underway. The men's volleyball program here and Jeff Bebus, SID here at Calvin, sitting down with Ellen Barker. Acro and tumbling, one of those new sports out there that is really growing nationwide. So here we go, they're gonna inbounds it right in front of the Calvin bench. So about three quarter code, it'll be Dane Harvey. 0.7 seconds left, just keeps it down to overway, tapped away and that'll do it. So good job by Hope after that big three by Marcus Bolt. We got 11 point game through 34-23 as both teams enter the locker room. Calvin leads it. Yeah, and Hope needs to make a few adjustments, but I know Coach Mitchell, he's gonna do that. They're gonna come out a different team. We're gonna have ourselves a battle here in the second half. Oh, looking forward to it. Stay with us at halftime. Much more coming your way as you're watching all the action live tonight. Again, Calvin leads it by 11, 34-23 over Hope here on the Calvin Sports Network. Hey, sorry I missed your game. It's okay. You see that? That's when I realized it's time to finally do the thing we've been talking about for years. So we're making plans for right now. Careful! You know, Auburn is a nice You like it? Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and spend your life living.
I just got to get used to that. Calvin Knight's <laughs> football, as you saw there, so excited for this fall. At the break, Repikita drew nine, so courtside for this one. Calvin leading it 34-23, Drew, at the half, and only one player on both sides of double figures. It's the guy you'd expect, though, in Jalen Overwood. Yeah, he's had a nice first half, being patient on the inside, making some nice passes from the double team, but not settling, just kicking the basketball out, doing a good, uh, good job being patient, splitting the defense, attacking the basket on his way, as we mentioned, to a double-double, hitting his season averages of 20 and 10. One of the things you talked about, Drew, let's take a look at those percentages. It's just a rough shooting night, especially behind the arc, really for both teams. The last three minutes or so, they closed out better, but both teams can shoot better and need to in the second half. Absolutely, especially for Hope. I mean, they're getting good shots. I think they need to attack the basket, get in the lane, kick out to open shooters rather than take contested threes, but just one for 13 from beyond the arc, 7.7%. So have to do a better job there. Four of seven from the free throw line could do better there and then just 28% overall from the field. So got to make shots. That's the key to this game is putting the ball in the hoop. So if they can do that, they can get back in this game. They got to do it on the defensive end too. Uh, Kelvin shooting 37% from three. So knocking down some threes, making them pay on the double double team of over. One other thing to keep an eye on, Tanner Wiggering got a West Otto, one of the senior leaders, three personal fouls. That's something we're going to have to watch in the second half is how do they utilize him for Coach Mitchell and keep him foul free? Yeah, we'll see if Greg Mitchell starts him uh, in that second half, but he's got to stay out of foul trouble, one of their leading scorers on the season. Quillen's doing his best to battle on the inside, but they got to have a couple other guys step up. They've had good balance, but they only had one player uh, score more than one basket in that first half, and that was Justice Mims. So they need some, some, some more balance and more contributions on the offense. We talked about two new sports here at Calvin University with Jim Timmer and the athletic department just getting started literally with their first game coming up this week, men's volleyball. And that's really taken this area by storm at the high school level as well. Well, let's introduce you to Spencer Frederick, the new coach here for Calvin University men's volleyball. Well, about just exactly a year ago, a lot of excitement coming to Calvin University on the campus here with the expansion of the athletic department. Not only men's football, which you probably know about by now, but also exciting news with men's volleyball being added and also acro and tumbling on the women's side. And joined us right now, just days away from the start of his season, men's volleyball head coach here at Calvin University, Spencer Frederick. And Spencer, first and foremost, welcome to West Michigan. Thank you. Yeah, shy to be here. So you are a California native. Yes. And you get a chance. You went to UC Santa Barbara to now bring a sport that's really blossoming here in West Michigan, even at the high school level, men's volleyball to Calvin University. How excited are you? I'm super excited. Uh, me and the team, we've just been grinding away um, all throughout our training block in the fall. And now we're just getting ready to start it back up in the spring. And just like we're seeing with Coach Fig for football, this has really opened up eyes nationally for Calvin University because of where you have to go and find talent. You got talent coming from all over the continental United States. Yeah, we have guys coming from California, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois. We even have kids coming from internationally, whether it be from Singapore, Canada. So it's been really fun to see the global expansion uh, take part in men's volleyball here. So it's been just about a year for you. What was the toughest part of starting up a program like this? I think the biggest thing was just the dedication and the structure, making sure that the structure was there, making sure that we had guys coming in uh, with that type of dedication. I really wanted to start something from the ground up. Your first game on the road coming up in two days. Next month, you get to play here at home. How excited are the guys and how excited are for you to see this program develop? I'm, I'm more excited for the guys just because they get to play. Um, I had my time playing and now I'm coaching. And so it's fun to see the excitement on their faces. Um, I try to key in on them like, hey, every practice, like, hey, just one more day till that big game. Obviously, we have games before then. Um, but really, we just want to put on a good show for the fans here um, at the Van Nord Arena. Well, Coach Frederick, best of luck coming up with the season. Thank you. So men's volleyball being added to the lineup along with football. But there was an addition on the women's side as well, acro and tumbling. And to tell us more about that, Jeff Phoebus last week got a chance to sit down with their head coach, Ellen Barker. Thanks, Brett. Well, in this segment, we're joined by Kelvin's new women's acrobatics and tumbling coach, Ellen Barker. And uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about this program here and just your excitement about coming in here. You're not new to the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, seven years at Adrian, where you took over a program that was fairly new. What's it like to come to Kelvin now and build up a brand new program, having coached for a number of years yeah. and with experience under your belt? 
it's exciting. That's the biggest word for it. Um, I can't wait to offer athletes an incredible student athlete experience um, and at a great institution. Absolutely. Well, the Kelvin Athletics Institution is a very successful one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of energy. You mm -hmm. jump right into that. So mm -hmm. does how, how does that impact you when you're going out? you're building, you're recruiting, yeah. you're putting things together. It's gotta help you out, I would think. I think so. I love to have the high energy um, because if I feel like if I don't have it, my athletes won't have it. Um, and so my job is to go out and basically be the Calvin student athlete experience and show them what they could have. So let's talk about your student athlete yeah. experience and how you got into the sport. You did a couple of years at Davenport Post High School where you did some type of version of acrobatics and tumbling, then later on to uh, Azusa Pacific University, faith-based institution in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and how it impacted you and how it drew a passion for this sport for you down the road. Totally. Um, so I knew about acrobatics and tumbling in high school, um, but at the time there were five schools and all very far away from me who grew up here in Michigan. And I was too afraid to go far away. And Azusa Pacific was my first choice. So I did my kind of cheerleading stint at Davenport, and that was great, but I wanted something more, and that more was acrobatics and tumbling. So I got to, um, Azusa Pacific was kind of the only school institution at the time who offered that faith-based, um, high-quality team and academics that I was looking for. And so since they had all three, that was my choice, and I had a great experience and made me want to offer this experience yeah. to somebody else. So you're on the recruiting trail right mm -hmm. now and you're trying to use some of those same pillars, you know, yeah. the academics, the athletics, the faith-based experience. Talk about the recruiting that you're doing right now and the kind of kids that you're looking for and where you're going to find them. Totally. Um, I am all over the place right now, especially January and February. That's when our um, all the athletic seasons are from where I recruit from. Um, so I am on the road. So we have people coming from our, even just to our clinics, um, from Texas, Maryland, um, Illinois, just things that are close and places that are far. And I just try to share what people could experience. Yeah. So finally, looking ahead to 2025, mm -hmm. what are you trying to build and what can we expect, um, you yeah. know, what's on the docket? Again, continuing the athletic success that Calvin has uh, fostered in their other athletic programs, I am a firm believer that we could um, continue to replicate that success and um, create new ground in acrobatics and tumbling as a sport. Um, I'm really looking forward to our full regular season and hosting some meets in this great um, arena yeah. and it's gonna be really cool. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, let's turn it back to uh, Drew and Brett for an exciting second half. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Coach. So a lot of excitement building for both those sports getting underway here. Right now, though, the rivalry series is what it's all about as both teams coming out of the court to warm up for the second half. 34-23, our score at the break. Calvin over Hope. We'll come back with more and break it down. We'll get Drew's thoughts on the second half and maybe some adjustments to look for. You're watching everything live tonight here on the Calvin Sports Network. Hey, I'm Andrew, a freshman here at Calvin University. Just a little under a year ago, I found myself in the frenzy of applying to colleges, scholarships, and more. Amidst this, I found out about Calvin's Entrada Scholars Program, a summer opportunity where I could take a college course for transferable credits and begin familiarizing myself with college life. At first though, I was hesitant to go. I didn't know if I even wanted to attend Calvin yet, let alone spend my last summer before college. Well, at college. In hindsight though, I wouldn't have traded that month on campus for anything else. One of the most impactful parts of my experience was learning how to navigate my transition from high school to college. Whether it be learning to take better notes, adjusting to living with a roommate, or making the decision to hang out with my new friends instead of working on that writing assignment, and try to give me first-hand exposure to what is now part of my daily life as a freshman. Being able to connect with people my age who shared similar values and backgrounds transformed Entrada into something truly more than I expected. In just a few weeks, I felt as though I had grown so much more than just academically with everyone in the program. As for my fears of missing out on a summer of getting to have fun, there certainly wasn't any shortage of that. After returning this fall, having a head start with friends, classes, and simply being familiar with campus has definitely improved my confidence in being a capable college student while still being able to enjoy myself. 
And for all the juniors out there, Entrada can still help you discover what you're looking for in a college. Just like it helped confirm that Calvin was the right choice for me, I believe the program will give each student experiences that can help them begin their own college journey. Some of the highlights of that first 20 minutes drew seven players scoring each side for Calvin Hope. We talked about their deep benches. Outside shooting going to be something to watch. Tanner Wickerink, uh, what do you think, partner, as far as your keys to the second yeah, half? Yeah, well, Tanner Wickerink has got to get going. He was limited in the first half with those three fouls. So it'll be interesting to see if he starts the second half. He has to stay out of foul trouble, but their leading scorer on the season only attempted two shots in that first half. So they got to run the offense through him, get him the ball get him some confidence going. It's tough sometimes when you're in follow trouble, uh, but good balance on both sides. These first four minutes are gonna be key. Who sets the tone? Who sets the intensity? Kelvin definitely put Hope on their heels to start this game. Let's see what kind of answer Hope has to start the second half. I think for Greg Mitchell to watch the intensity and pressure on the ball starting the second half. You talked about Kelvin came out and they really had a lot of adrenaline. I think they were taking it to Hope. Let's see if Hope counters that. I think they need to rise their level. And then when you look at it, I mean, with Mims, with Dykhouse and Warman, they can really challenge these Calvin guards. Those, those guards from Hope really need to turn that pressure up. You're right. Only two turnovers for Kelvin in that first half. They thrived last season by turning Kelvin over, making them uncomfortable in the half court. And those entry passes into overweight, way too easy. They got to have better ball pressure on the passer, make it tough to get the ball into overweight, and then come harder with that double team. So turn that pressure up, get some easy ones in, tr in transition. Everything Hope has gotten in that first half has happened on the, on the half court offense. We've talked about all night long how Hope and Calvin not only rated by Sports Illustrated as one of the best college basketball rivalries out there, regardless of division in college hoops, but they are like Duke North Carolina Division One, and you'll see that as they meet later in the season with the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels. Everything included except no bad blood off the court between Calvin Hope. These guys know each other. They played high school basketball against each other. Both coaches are alums and players in their respective schools, so it's a lot of fun, and they're taking that over now to help out the community. In fact, the rivals are teaming up to get blood. It's the first ever rivalry battle blood drive. And again, how it works, each school will have two days of blood drives on or around each rivalry game. The next meeting at Hope for the men's side will be January 27th. That's a Saturday. So hope.edu to find out the information there. But the first one for Calvin happened earlier today on campus. The next one, January 25th, mark it down in Calvin's Commons Annex Lecture Hall from noon to 6 p.m. And with that, here we go, partner. Start of the second half. Hope moving right to left on your TV side. I want to say radio dial. And Wigrant starting the second half for Coach Mitchell. Let's see if they run it through him. A little pick and roll up top. Let's see if they can get him going. Their leading score on the season. 11-point deficit. They go down low to Quillen, who couldn't handle the pass. Went off his leg, but I think it hit overway last. So they stay with the Flying Dutchman. They'll inbounds down on the baseline, right in front of their bench. Just underway here, second half. Glad to have you with us on a cold, snowy, icy night in mid-January. What would you expect for the rivalry series here in West Michigan? Step in, jumper, Warman, kind of faded away off the back iron, but look at Gabe Quillen with the offensive grab and put back. Boy, he does all the dirty work, doesn't he? Out of yeah, Catholic Central. using that length, that athleticism again to his advantage. Long rebounds off those threes. Range rebounder, Gabe Quillen, giving a nice effort on the inside. Tonight. Both teams, it looks like, going with their original starting lines. Edgar Keza way off the mark in the top of the key. Rebound cleared. Out of there by Parker Hovey got the start tonight for Greg Mitchell. He's got it right wing. So it's Warman, Hovey, Quillen, who's got it at the top of the key. Wigger rank with those three persons. Now a reach-in foul. Wrestler in a size mismatch there, trying to reach in, commits the foul. Also Dykhouse to round out the starting five. Fort Hope for Calvin and Bill Saul. Yuchenna Egekeza, Owen Barnado, Jalen Ogwe, Luca Wrestler, and Marcus Bolt. Egekeza trying to hit that 1,000-point mark. Maybe he's trying to just get that monkey off his back on that three-point attempt. Only 25% on the season, so 
they'll live with him shooting threes to get back in this game. Oh, Wickering had a good look, turnaround jumper, rolled off the rim and out, rebound over with. Yeah, just a bucket away, a two-pointer away is Ega Kesson. Hard to believe he's only got one on the night. Barnado to Overway, right elbow against Quillen. Now it clears out, going to back him down. Turns baseline as he tried to spin back the other way. Quillen with the quick hands, knocks it out. And he'll stay with Calvin in their home white. The gold numbers, maroon trim. Hope for the visiting blue with the orange numbers and the white trim. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. They throw it way out top to Barnado. Between the rings, high screen from Overway. Makes the three. Ega Kaza back to Barnado. Deep three. Oh, off the window. I don't know if he called glass or not, but chalk it up for three. Yeah, how about, how about Barnado? He's fired up. Acted like he did it on purpose. No smile. The game faces on. And a couple triples tonight for Barnado. Quillen in the paint. Out to Wiggerink at the top. And now traveling the call as Mormon tried to drive. Took the extra... Shuffle step. Barnado with that three, by the way, second leading score for the Knights with eight now. Lead is a dozen, 37 25, student section. Been on the get go all night long, and now they want to. <laughs> Nim's a little fun tripping over his feet that time on the strong move by Russ over the bounce. Overway has it at the top. Sets the screen, Ekekeza comes over it, kick over to Bolt, right side, on the way, no for three, battle for the rebound, Mims saves it, but to Ekekeza, Calvin stays with the possession, Overway down low, bumped out by Quillen, out to Barnado, no, off the back iron. Place would erupted if that would have gone down. Reset, though, the offensive rebound for the Knights. Wrestler against Dykehouse. Guards being aggressive, Wrestler tries to take him down low on the post, kick out Barnado for no. On another three attempt, just missed that one on the left iron. Battle for the rebound and deflecting off of Keza. Nice play that time by Hobie. And no hesitation there by Varnado. Knocked that one in off the bank, so feeling confident. But the next couple fly, so Coach Stahl might have a talking to his team at the next time out. Hey, we want to continue to attack the basket. Jalen Overway hasn't touched the ball inside much. Start this second half, they've been a little three happy, so see if they make some adjustments. The sophomore Barnado had a career-high game, 21 points back in December. Matter of fact, he was the MIAA Player of the Week around Christmas time, so he's got that potential. Quillen, trying to back his way through, goes up, and we're going to have a bump against Overway. Coach Saul wanted to travel. And they're going to get, oh, was it Barnado? It was Barnado with the reach in. Maybe a travel, but I think the bump and Yep. Body contact of Overway kind of put him off balance and caused the travel. So he was the right call by the official. And again, Gabe Quillen making good things happen when the basketball goes inside. Barnado second personal, team second this half. None on the board yet for Hope. 16.50 left to go. And again, the shooting woes continue for Hope at the charity stripe as well. Not shooting very well as a team. In and out of the first by Quillen. Four, eight, four for eight now on the game. Especially when you come into enemy territory if you want to pull off the upset and big rivalry win. Got to make the free throws. Four of nine now on the game is Hope College from the free throw line. Missed the second empty possession for the Flying Dutchman. 37-25, the lead is 12 in favor of Calvin. 16-37 and ticking left to go. Regulation, Bolt, strong move to the baseline. Splits the two defenders, puts it up and in. Went right around Wiggering with the bounce. That was just a straight line drive, determined drive there by Marcus Bolt. Love his intensity that he brings to the game. Here's Quillen facing up, left block against Overway, kicks it back out. Colby back to Quillen, handoff Dykehouse coming around from right to left. Good defense, nice finish. Quillen on the little slip through after the screen. I like that. I think they got to get Jalen Overway in a few more pick and rolls, get the big fella moving, get him out on the perimeter and let Quillen use his size and athleticism to beat him to the basket as he did right there. Good finish, good find there by Warmer. I think Dykehouse is very good in the two-man game. Dykehouse. 15.48 left to go. Shot clock down to 11. Barnado on the post. Kick out Overway. Got one earlier. Couldn't get that three. Shooting woes continue on this end now for Calvin in the yeah, second again, half. Again, they're getting, they're getting content launching threes, right? And that allows teams to get back in the game when you don't have to make the defense work. Just kind of bailing them out by launching threes. Justice Mims 
Sophomore to Rochester Adams. Dribbles in traffic. Force that one up. Oh, and one. Coach Saul can't believe it. He wanted to travel as Mims got off balance, right it back his way down, but count the turnaround jumper. He'll get a free throw coming up as we reach the first media time out of the second half. 15-21 left to go in this one. 39-27, Calvin by 12. Over Hope will come back with more after this timeout on the Calvin Sports Network. Big E's Sports Grill, your next destination for any occasion. With incredible entertainment and amazing food that makes you want to come back for more. Family memories are made. Where sports are enjoyed and friends gather. Cheers to good times, great friends, and a place where the game's always on. Only at Big E's. I love the NAIB scholarship program because I just love how personal these scholarships are for the alumni and for the students. Being a student who grew up in foster care and then getting a scholarship for students who were in foster care and being able to connect with that donor and see the love and the passion that they have for me and being able to resonate with me and what I've gone through, God opened doors that I didn't even know were there. I'm at Kelvin and my legacy is starting here. Well, one of the big questions students and families are asking as they make college decisions is, can I afford it? Well, Calvin has come up with a number of ways to cut the price tag for families. But one you may not have heard of, it's a bit unique, is its named scholarship program. We're talking 1,500 scholarships available each year for anywhere from an additional $500 to $15,000 per year on top of one's merit or need-based aid. Now, Drew, you and I are now proud dads. And as parents, we can appreciate that. So take advantage. Find out more at calvin.edu. After the timeout, Justice Sims, excuse me, Mims, a sophomore, at the free throw line, knocks down to convert the three-point play. Back to a single-digit game and open a little momentum on their side. Let's see what Coach saw, the message he sent to his team. And right there, right out of the timeout, Isolate, overway, throw it into the big fella. Coach Saul sent a message, enough with the threes. Let's go inside first, get the big fella some touches, and go from there. Ellie's yet to score in the second half. We've had almost five minutes in regulation. 15, 10, and ticking. Two-man game, wrestler left alone. Wise, good poise, went straight up, knocks down the short jumper in the paint. I love Luke, the wrestler's game, does all the little things for this team. Steps in at point guard when he's asked to do that. Guards the team's, other team's best player. Knocks down shots as he did right there. Got caught down low on a screen. Mims had a good look at the three from the right wing. Could knock it down, left it short. But there's Gabe Quillen again, running it down. The garbage man. Big number 33 has it. Hand off that time to Warman. Kick out TJ McKenzie. And look out, he can get hot. 6-4 senior out of North Muskegon. Two sport athlete at Hope. You can see him on the gridiron partner when he goes up to catch those balls as a wide receiver for Peter Sturz. Heck of an athlete. Former Norseman along the lake shore. Luca Ressler has it out top, offset right. Screen from Overway, and McKenzie tried to come over the top. It's going to be a bump against TJ. He set the shot clock to 20. Marcus Bolton inbounds. On the sideline, right in front of the Calvin bench. Dykehouse, after a short breather, coming in. Warman will sit down now. Sophomore out of East Lansing. He's played well tonight. Both coaches, again, trying to utilize their bench to avoid the fatigue factor. Bolt almost mishandled that one. Also in for Hope is Ben Wager back in. Overweight, double-team baseline. Kicks it out. Harvey for three. In and out. Rebound. Agakaza goes up high. Follow. No. On the offensive glass. Bolt. Nobody's fouled. Third time was a charm. And how about Calvin attacking the offensive glass there, Drew? And Marcus Bolt just bringing the fight. He does that every single time he steps on the floor. Relentless effort. And as a coach, you got to love the effort of your team. Second chance opportunities. Loose balls. 
that tells the story, and Kelvin is winning those battles tonight. Dane Harvey, his dad Steve, a coach, Forest Hills Northern back in the day, and he's acting like a coach. They're going over and making sure everyone's on the same page with the coaching staff. First free throw up and good by Bolt. Wrestler will come out, freshman Jordan Scott back in there. Really love his game. 6-3-1-9 out of Plymouth Christian Academy. Second one too strong. Rebound Dykehouse. In transition across the timeline. Doesn't have numbers. Wisely pulls it back out. Keep looking up and you're saying, okay, where is this game at? Just kind of sits around that 8-10 to 10 point range. Deep three by Dykehouse with a lot left in the shot clock. No, running it down was Dane Harvey. Up ahead, Agakeza. Kicks left side. That's Scott down low. Overway, double team comes and a foul. Call a little bit tighter that time. And we've seen that maybe to start the second half to set the tone. Yeah, a little too aggressive on that double team. And you don't really need the foul right there. You had him off the block, so you had him in that deep corner a little bit where you want to set the trap. But a little bit of a bailout call there by the officials. That's Wager's third, by the way. He will stay in there. Now, Wager ain't with three coming in to give Quillen a breather. And you're right, partner. This game, it's, it's kind of been at arm's length distance in favor of Kelvin. No, neither team wants to make it a game or stretch it out to 15-20 and kind of put it away. So the longer Kelvin lets Hope hang around, all it takes is one or two shots, and yeah. it's it's a one-two possession game. They got Eka Keza there on a back cut of the baseline, trying to steal his defender, then T.J. McKenzie came flying in late, and his momentum took him into Eka Keza. Easy call for the official. So Kelvin inbounds underneath their own basket. Shot clock at 20. Now into the Knights lineup, Brady Hewing, the freshman out of Petoskey. He's got the basketball now, right wing. Up top, Bolt. Shot clock down to eight. Picked up his dribble, needs help. Dane Harvey, that's off the mark, air ball on the three. And we'll go back the other way. Shooting won't continue. Both coaches got to be going nuts because they could both shoot it back in the day, too. Yeah, this is, this is obviously Coach Saul. I, I think he's the second leading scorer in Kelvin history, so over 2,000 points in his career as a player. And Coach Mitchell, he could fill it up as well. So kind of a replay of what we saw last year in this rivalry. And you don't want to take guys' confidence away or handcuff them, but you got to say attack the basket, no more threes. Now a foul going to be called. I'll tell you a guy you don't have to ask twice about attacking the basket is that guy right there, number three. TJ McKenzie, when he comes in, he is looking to either get his shot or take it to the basket. He's the seeker, not an avoider, and you love that as a coach. You gotta have that mentality if you go out there and make an aggressive play. Attack the basket, you can tell. He seeks that contact on the football field as well. Short on the first, second one upcoming. More substitutions for Bill Saul and the Knights as Bolt checks out. Barnado coming back in. Trevin Winkle, the sophomore, as well. Overweight getting a breather at the 12.48 mark. We got the media timeout coming up under 12. And McKenzie missed them both with a tap out that time. Oh, and Mims lost it up ahead. Agacaza, a two-handed flush. Those are those big plays. And listen to this crowd. Back out, McKenzie trying to quiet him for three. No, up high with the rebound. Nice job, can't finish, but was fouled. And that's Robert Nocek. Out of Bloomingdale, Illinois, St. Francis High School is a 6'5 senior. Saw him a little bit in the first half, but a big rebound there. I believe that's 1,000 points now for Uchenna Egekeza. What a way to do it in I was the rivalry say, game. And that was jammed to get the crowd off their feet. That was a thousand with an exclamation point. <laughs> and he's been waiting for that. A little bit of struggle in this game. But what a way to hit the milestone. and Something that he can hang his hat on. I think he was the 28th player in Kelvin history to join the thousand point club. So a heck of a career for Uchenna and more to come. Should have known that with the IQ of the student section. They were going crazy. No check, by the way, gets a nice high bounce on the first free throw attempt, and it drops. Second one upcoming. 12.27 left to go in regulation. In and out of the second. Rebound cleared by Winkle. Hands off to the freshman point guard, Jordan Scott. Scott working against the senior Dykehouse. Beats him with the left hand. Finishes. 
Nice job of this 6-3 frame, just elevates and lays it up and in. Really giving a good contribution. I mean, just right in off the bench and no hesitation, not playing like a freshman in this rivalry. What a career he has ahead of him for the Knights. He's got eight on the night. Remember, last four games or so, he's been averaged about 10 off the bench. Those are big points for Bill Saul, the Knights. Strong move, Warman, but as he went up, slipped a little bit. But he got bailed out with a foul. Jordan Scott bumped him. And that'll get us to the immediate timeout, the under 12. So back and forth we go. It was a 12-point game, excuse me, an 11-point game, 34-23 at the intermission. It's a 12-point lead now for Calvin. 46-34 for Hope. 11.50 left to go on this one at Van Nord Arena. We'll take a timeout and come back with more as you're watching all the action live on the Calvin Sports Network. My name is Nate Knapper. I'm a 2008 graduate of Calvin University, and I'm currently a special agent with the FBI. I'm also an attorney, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Joseph Project. I'm of the opinion that there is no reason why every single human trafficking survivor in need of legal services shouldn't be given those services free of charge. And the idea was to connect them with pro bono legal help so that they could resolve that legal collateral damage and move forward into a brighter future. I've always resonated with the idea that we could be agents of renewal, right? That we could work and cooperate alongside the vision that God has for the world. If you're willing to submit to his path in obedience, dream the dreams that he would have you enact for the world, I think that you'll go places that you would never imagine going. Brett Bikita along with Drew Neitzel as we welcome you back to a rockin' Van Nord Arena here in the downtown Grand Rapids area, just east of downtown at Calvin University off the belt line. And Drew, you look at it, if Hope could somehow come back in this one tonight, it'd be a feather in their cap because they have a tough week coming up. They've got Trine and Holland on Saturday, then Albion, then they host Calvin on Saturday, 20, January 27th. That's part of our doubleheader broadcast for the women playing as well. And then at Trine, January 31st. I mean, this, this is the key stretch of the season. I mean, these next 10 days are going to determine if they're going to be in the hunt for the MIAA championship or not. So got to get together here with just under 12 minutes to play for Calvin. Got to get the ball into Overway. He's only had one field goal attempt for eight minutes in this second half. How about Hope doing, hanging in there without their leading scorer, Tanner Wagering, only playing 11 minutes so far in this game and only two points. Gotten good minutes, though, out of the guy who just knocked down those two free throws at the guard slot, Marcus Foreman. Kick back out, Barnado for three. Inside out game, beautiful. And that's one thing we haven't talked about enough. Jalen Overway, good passing big man. He certainly is, and I think they got to keep hitting the ball in. He's going to make the right decisions. He'll shoot it when he's has the opportunity, but he's going to get his teammates open. Good things happen when he gets the basketball inside. Spin on the drive. Hitting the deck was Hovey, who's back in the lineup after the timeout. And they're going to get the foul against Owen Barnato. It's his second. Kelvin wants to be careful how aggressive they're playing on defense. Yeah. They defend without fouling. Hopes really struggled, only 36 points so far in the game, 37 now. Don't want to put him on the free throw line as they'll be in the double bonus shortly and give them freebies. Make them earn it. Yeah, they're going to enjoy the bonus the rest of the way. 17 foul, even though that was a shooting foul against Calvin. And split of the pair that time as Hobie missed the second. 49-37. Lead is a dozen in favor of the Knights with the basketball. Jordan Scott, their outstanding freshman. Oh, look at the 360 spin goes up. And partially blocked by Hobie. Bill Saul thought there was a foul. They play on. Dykhouse in transition. Hesitation dribble. Gets to the right elbow. Watched by Winkle. Left side, Hobie. Aggressive. Tough bounce pass and unable to hang on to it. Was no check that time. Greg Mitchell kind of yelling at Dykhouse, I think, because he wanted a reset for Hope College offense. And never got into it. Five team fouls, by the way, up on the board against Hope. So one more to give before the bonus for the Knights. Marcus Bolt running the point out top. Set play for Bill Saul. High screen from Winkle. Nothing there as he dribbles right side. Now they want to feed over away. Here comes the double team across. Gets it to Wrestler. 
Rassler hesitation dribble. Nice bounce pass, backdoor cut, bolt. No, but he's fouled. And if that's Winkering, that's number four. Quillen's putting his hand up, but let's see what the official says. Well, they are going to say Gabe Quillen on the bump. At some point, Hope is going to have to come out and get Kelvin. I mean, they're kind of playing toes on the three-point line. No real true point guard out there. You got Wrestler, you got the freshman Scott, you got Marcus Bolt bringing it up, playing some point. He's not, he's a good ball handler, but he's not a true point guard. So if you're Hope, I think you could turn the pressure up, pick him up full court, maybe a little run and jump, try to trap a little bit. You can get some turnovers and easy twos. Ega Kessa will come back in the backcourt with Jordan Scott who will run the point. Wrestler out as Bolt gets the first, too strong on the second. Bolt, by the way, has got nine, second leading score now for the Knights. Scott with eight. Barnado with eight, too. Good balance scoring. Remember, Hope had almost five players averaging double figures coming to this one. I think Dykos was just under the mark at nine plus. Quillen, right wing, dribbles through traffic, trying to finish the right hand and does. Just beat Overway that time with a half step. Gabe Quillen showing his quickness. He's done that time and time again, putting the ball on the deck. And Getting overway away from the basket. Quillen's been very solid on the interior. Gabe Quillen leading score now for the Flying Dutchman with 10. Jordan Scott gets the paint, shovels it to Overway, wasn't ready, but then gathers himself. Agakeza out to Bolt, all by himself, dialing up the three short. Just a little flat on the shot, but tipped out and running down the rebound is Bolt to reset for Calvin. 50-39 to Overway, left block, trying to power his way in, knocked away to a late whistle. And I think they're going to get Gabe Quillen, 17 fouls, so Overway will step to the charity stripe. If that's Quillen, that's two quick ones. I think he's got three now. Wrestler back in off the Calvin bench. Mim's going to come in. And it'll be no check checking out for Coach Mitchell. TJ McKenzie in. Wiggerink will come out. The 9-24 mark. Remember, yet to pick up a foul here in the second half, so he's still playing with three, is the senior Tanner Wiggerink. Overway with 11 to help lead the way for Calvin along with Barnado. First free throw. What a good stroke for the big man. I really like his shot. Have since his days back at Highland Christian. He's only going to get stronger as he goes through. But what a Tony said as a freshman, MIAA player of the year last year. Only a sophomore, second one upcoming. Got a really good feel for the game. Doesn't make a lot of bad decisions. Enjoy watching him for the next couple. Too strong off the heel on the second. Rebound hope. 51-39. Can they get it back to single digits? Foreman trying to penetrate out to Quillen for three. That's off the heel. Long term for the rebound. Run down. And last touch by Wrestler battling with Mims as he went into the Calvin student section. They let him hear about it. 9.06 left to go. In regulation in this one. Calvin won the first one a year ago at Hope. Trying to do the same here, but this time at home where they're a perfect 6-0 on the season. Nice up and under drive by Warman, but too strong off the board. Comes off the front of the rim. Here comes Calvin on the run. Wrestler down low. Agakeza trying to go up. Reaching foul called by Dykaus. He can't believe it. Wave off that finish, though. It was before, and the ball was knocked away. Uchenna Agakeza going to be called. Second personal. As Drew mentioned, though, keep an eye on this. Eight team foul for Hope. So they got to be careful not to let Calvin Both just team shoot all the way in here. So got to play good defense without fouling. Again, Hope just not making up any ground. Kind of just trading baskets, trading free throws. You got to find a way to get a little four, six, eight point run. They haven't had this whole game. A lot of tight games for Calvin lately. They've been able to pull them out. I know what Adrian Wrestler had some big free throws down the stretch. I get Keza splits the pair. It wouldn't be a whole Calvin game without you know a little free throw shooting contest at the end, right, partner? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I I'm thinking this is gonna come down to the end. I hope's got a run in them. They've been waiting right there. Warman, nice attack. And the lane split open and 
good assertive, aggressive move right there. I think he and Dykehouse got to do more of that on the attack. Nice finish that time, Warmer with a left hand. Down the left side of the lane, 52 41. Edgar Kessa to Barnato, left corner. He's got the height advantage on Dykehouse. Kicks it out once he gets the paint overway. No, off the front iron. Battle for the rebound, and TJ McKenzie takes it out of there. Got the stop. Now they got to value the basketball and get a good shot. Every possession trying to come from behind. You have to value the basketball on the offensive end. Willen for three. No, off the heel. Boy, both bigs can shoot the three, but just can't get it to drop. Rebound, Calvin. Edgar Kessler with the bounce in the front court. Crosses over, attacks. Scoop shot. Wow! Up and in. Well over a thousand points now. Yuchenna Edgar Kessler. Yeah, that's just an athlete right there making something happen. Slicing and dicing the kiss right there. Nice move. Here's Warman trying to answer on the other end and a foul as he's making his way to the basket, and that'll take us to the media timeout. One and one coming up for Hope when we return. 7.38 left to go, second half. Our score, Calvin 54, Hope 41. You're watching all the action live on this cold night in mid-January right here on the Calvin Sports Network. Where will the next revolutionary idea come from? that next breakthrough in scientific research, or that next literary masterpiece. At Kelvin University, you can dream bigger, think deeper, aim higher. Our world-class faculty push students to keep asking hard questions and never settle for the status quo. Become part of the solution to the world's big problems. Become part of a university that challenges students to go beyond themselves as Christ's agents of renewal in the world. Kelvin University, go beyond. Well, there's been a lot of media coverage in recent weeks around an exciting new initiative that Calvin's leading. The Wayfinder program offers free courses in humanities for low-income adults in a neighboring zip code to Calvin. Zip code that has a far less percentage of residents who hold a bachelor's degree. The program kicks off this summer. It will be held in the 49507 zip code, just a few miles from Calvin's campus here, just east of downtown Grand Rapids. Calvin lists residents and area partners and are removing as many barriers to education as possible, offering free child care, transportation, and meals on nights of classes. Find out more at calvin.edu. That's calvin.edu. Brett Bikita, along with Drew Knight. So Matt Kaczynski, our director of our broadcast tonight. Jeff Phoebus, host athletic director. Nate Porter, our producer, and our whole crew here. Happy to bring this to you. We'll do it again over at DeVos Fieldhouse with the Hope Sports Network crew for the men's side. That'll be the night game on Saturday, January 27th, just 10 days away. And before that, we'll be here with our crew tonight for the women's rematch, opening the first one at Van Nord Arena. Well, both free throws good, 11-point game again, Drew Neitzel. That's been the magic number. Been hovering between 8 and 13, and they just can't make a dent in this lead of Kelvin. And give Kelvin credit, they haven't shot the ball well in the second half, but managed to make the right plays, hit, hit the offensive glass, got a lot of second chance opportunities. It's an 11-point game at the half in favor of Calvin, 34-23. Turnaround jumper way off the mark by Ressler. Barely grazed the rim. T.J. McKenzie with the rebound. Nice crossover in the paint. Hangs. Yes, and one. That's what he can do, T.J. McKenzie. And he's one of those I kind of harken back to my old Pistons days as a kid, right? He's that Benny Microwave Johnson, if you will, off the bench. I mean, he's looking to score, he's aggressive, and when he starts to knock down a couple, you better be concerned. Yeah, he's he's doing the heat check, right? He makes one, that next one, the time he touches the basketball, it's going up. It's, every team needs a guy like that who has supreme confidence and shoots you back in the game, and they're gonna need some more buckets out of him coming down the stretch. And he can get his looks because he's 6'4", he's athletic, he's a senior, and he knows what to do. Good body control. Gets the free throw there. It's an eight-point game, 54-46. Calvin and Hope fans, stop me if you've heard this before. Now a steal on the knockaway. That was Mims getting a hand out on the wrestler kick out to the corner. Get a bucket here. There's going to be some real game pressure on Kelvin. Wow, what a crossover. Warman goes up. Agakaza with the block, though. 
Gorman gets it back and they'll reset. I don't know why they stopped play. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Are they checking to see if it... 17 on the shot clock? Did it freeze up a little bit? Because I don't think it hit rim. Yeah, I think, it, I think they just wanted to check it, if it should have been re reset. So Warman will inbounds. It'll be Hope Possession still in the front court on the far sideline. Agakeza on him. It's Quillen coming in during the timeout was Wager. Now Dykehouse will come in. Warman will come out. Mims also in there and McKenzie for Coach Mitchell. Calvin countering with Wrestler, Agakeza, Bolt, Overway, and Jordan Scott. Bounce pass into Dykehouse. He'll dribble out of the corner, reset out near the ninth. Between the rings, bounce pass to Quillen. Now what do we have? We have Luca Russell with a grab, and remember, every Again, another, foul. Yeah, cheap one right there, going to the line. Two shots now. The rest of the way for lined up. And that's the third on Russell. So Justice Mims at the free throw line. Bends and fires good for the sophomore. Haven't been good from the line the majority of this game, but these last last couple minutes, give credit to Hope. They're, they're getting to the line and they're they're knocking them down. And Mims with a quiet nine could be ten here. That'd be their third player with ten, just this like the Rapids. As close as they've been in a long time. A jinxed him. Broadcaster Jinx misses the second off the right side. Like a Keza with the rebound. Down to a seven-point game, 54-47, and Bill Saul's seen enough. He's going to take a timeout before the four-minute media timeout. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Well, we mentioned January 27. Starts with the afternoon game on the women's side here at Van Nord Arena. Hope you can join us on the Calvin Sports Network on their YouTube channel. Then Drew and I'll make the drive over right after this one's done. They told us there's going to be food over in Holland at DeVos Fieldhouse. Alan Babbitt's promised us that. The SID we'll work there. For food. That's right. And then we'll have a little in-between meal, and why not? Doubleheader action with hoops, as we'll be on the Hope Sports Network for the men's rematch over at the Moss Fieldhouse that night. That's coming up 10 days from now. Open Calvin fans, love to have you be a part of our broadcast Saturday, January 27. So it was 34-23, Calvin over Hope at the break. Since then, Hope has outscored Calvin 24-20 with 6.25 left to go in this one. Yeah, I mean, Hope's battling. We talked about it. It's not been pretty, but they are right here in striking distance, right where they want to be for not having a great performance. You look at Tanner Wiggerink, only played less than 13 minutes in this game. Two points, lead it, three points make it. Uh, their leading score on the season. So we'll see if they come back to him uh, late in this game or, you know, I like Gabe Cullen on the inside and then those guards. You talk about it, uh, Dyke House and uh, TJ McKenzie. Kind of getting that hot hand, so see who uh, Coach Mitchell stays with. Kind of falling back into this, into this rival. Don't forget to stay with us. Drew and I will have a post-game wrap, and then I will talk to the winning coach and a player from, obviously, the winning team tonight, whoever that might be. It's all coming up in our... Post-game show coverage after this one, but plenty of basketball yet to be played. 6.25 left to go. Agakeza matched up. T.J. McKenzie, good athletic matchup there, both about 6'4", and can play above the rim. Dane Harvey in after the timeout. Bolt in there with Overway. Overway has it. Now the double team coming over. Agakeza at the top. They have Wager to switch. Now knocked away. Shot clock down to two. Overway's just got to turn and fire. Hits the rim, but way off the mark, and Sims with the rebound. Awesome defensive possession right there by Hope, and exactly what Craig Mitchell wanted from his ball club coming out of the timeout. See if they can execute now and get a big basket. Dykehouse has a taste dribble. Got his man up in the air, goes up. Oh, can't get it to go, but he's fouled. So, Leighton Dykehouse, Zealandese product, fifth year senior for Coach Mitchell. Attack in the glass. We talked about Warman when he does that, what it brings to the table. Justice Mims as well. They've got some guys who can create their own shot off the bounce, and that time didn't get the and one, but Dykehouse will get two here. 
around and out. Wow, tight rims here at Van Nord Arena. By the way, that is the 10th team foul against Calvin, so double bonus on the rest of the way. Eight on the board against Hope. Second one upcoming for Dykehouse. Harvey and Scott in the backcourt. They'll move Egekeza to the small forward here with this lineup for both sides. Second one good. Dykehouse now with four. Overway high screen. Scott tried to run Dykehouse off of it. Thought about pulling the trigger for three. Now gets the bolt down the lane. Strong move. Yes! Between Weger and Quillen. How about that for Marcus Bolt? Yeah, that lane was wide open. Marcus Bolt getting downhill, turning that corner, and straight triple drive. Chicago area product has 11 now to help lead the way for Calvin. Quillen, right elbow. Over to McKenzie. Tries to set a screen for McKenzie. Goes up and under and beats Harvey, one of their best defenders that time with the right hand. Yeah, he's feeling it. you got to get the ball to him. Let him operate in space and use his speed. Athleticism. Oh, oh Dykehouse almost got a steal. Coach Mitchell <laughs> being corralled by his assistants. That's he thought tough, it was that, a that, That's a tough call. That happened right in front of his partner. I thought that was a clean pick. They're calling for a technical the student section. I agree with that happened right in front Main of us at pick by court. Clayton Dykehouse, and he was going to go the other way for an easy two. Cut it to a four-point game. Huge call. Huge call in this game. Working against Jordan Scott. Remember, that's a 19 foul, so everyone is shooting foul, but not a double bonus yet for the freshman. Let's see if the freshman, Coach Saul, showing a lot of confidence having him in there at crunch time. See if you can step up and knock down two big free throws. Officials trying to get one and one it is. The coach is to sit down. Kenton George, longtime Forest Hill Central head coach and assistant for Hope. Screaming out the play so Greg Mitchell can talk to the other official a little bit, get the next one. Jordan Scott, meanwhile, the freshman, cool customer, knocks down the yeah, first. Nothing but Ned, I mean, extremely confident. Second one in as well. That was a big possession, a big call there. It's back to an eight-point lead, 58-50. Under five minutes to go. Heating up here at Van Nord Arena on a cold night in West Michigan. Penetration, Wiggerink, and one. Leaves it for him. Strong move by Tanner. I'd like to see him get him going, but how about the penetration again with the guards? Yeah, Dykehouse just dancing with the basketball, beating his man, putting pressure on the D. They collapse, and great drop off to Wiggerink just re-enters the game, and it's a much-needed basket on a night where he just hasn't had much rhythm. Boy, high-arching free throw off the mark. Battle for the rebound. Bolt rips it away from McKenzie. Tanner Wiggering, not his night, even though they got him going there with a nice feed for the easy deuce. 58-52, two-possession game. Scott behind the back dribble, working against Dykehouse. Try to finish the left hand, lots of contact, no. Rebound, though, overway, shot blocked. I think it was Wiggerink who got a piece of it from behind. Here's Dykehouse in transition against Barnato. Agatkaza comes flying in, no, and a whistle and a foul as Wiggerink on the offensive glass. Couldn't get the put back, but he'll get a couple of free throws. And the, fan, the home crowd wanted the foul call on the other end, but I think it was a good no call. I think it was a pretty good contest up at the rim, but got to let the players decide this game before and change the play. This is Calvin Hope, Parker, yeah, right Hope, here. Hope just showing a little bit more desperation right now. They're going after those loose balls. Offensive rebounds a little bit harder. Calvin got to stay in attack mode and seize the win and take it, not try to. That was big partner Barnato with five. And so he is done. Wiggering at the free throw line has that high archer almost left it short. Shooters touch it, rolls in. Second one upcoming. So Barnado is out. Double bonus already on for Hope. Next foul against Hope will put Calvin in the double bonus, and Tanner Wiggering gets two. Four point game, I and mean, we <laughs> talked about this. We thought Hope might make their run. They haven't had a run this entire game. What a time to have it coming down these last five minutes. Every possession is critical. Get good shots on the offensive end. Senior Wiggerink now is seven on the night. Overway doubles team. Flying down the lane. Agat 
has a good feed by Overway, puts it up and in. Again, the key, getting that basketball into Jalen Overway. The double team came. Uchenna with the cut. And great find there by the big fella, Overway. Good assist by the big man. And now Wiggerink loses it going down the lane. Overway picks it up. And Calvin wants to calm it down. Marcus Bolt will run the point. I'd go right back into Jalen Overway, a little pick and roll. Get the basketball into him, run a little clock. Oh, man, love the atmosphere. Hear that student section. Bolt out to Overway. Shot clock down to 11. 60-54, Calvin by six in the basketball. Agakaza to Scott, the freshman. Behind the back, got it knocked away. Here's McKenzie. Now wants to challenge. Agakaza goes up. Nobody's fouled. Wise move by McKenzie. He cut in front of Agakaza to draw the contact and almost got the finish. That'll lead us to the under four immediate timeout. Don't touch that dial on the live stream. 3.13 left to go. Calvin 60, Hope 54. The Flying Dutchman will be shooting some free throws when we come back as you're watching all the action live from a heated up Van Norden Arena right here on the Calvin Sports Network. You see that? That's when I've realized I'm ready to start my own place. Yeah, I'm really excited. All right, that sounds great. So I'm making plans for right now. Like going back to my roots and opening my own restaurant. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and spend your life living. the student section they have been in it from the opening tap and that's what makes Calvin and Hope so special along with the alumni above them all the way around and two well coached teams great programs number four Calvin coming in 14 one overall 4 and 0 tied to top the MIAA with their counterpart Hope comes in 12 and 3 overall also 4-0 on MIAA, and then play, don't forget about Trine, number seven in the nation, out of Angola, Indiana. Newcomer to MIAA play just a few years back, but only one loss on the season overall for them in perfect in conference play, but eventually they're all going to have to meet each other as T.J. McKenzie hits a big free throw there. Just a five-point game, Drew. T.J. McKenzie, just a competitor, you can see got that look where he wants to take this game over and knock down the free throws. Nothing but nylon in the second. Hope. We talked about this earlier in the second half. They're going to pick up, put a little pressure on them. Try to turn over Kelvin here. With Battle of zeros with Dykehouse and Agakeza. They try to feed it in. High, low post. Overway knocked away. Agakeza, though, gets it back. Overway now right baseline. Back out to Bolt. They'll reset with 12 seconds on the shot clock. We roll under three minutes left to go in regulation. Overway, double team, kicks opposite. Scott, the freshman for three. Too strong off the back air. Overway with a big rebound. Then knocked away by McKenzie, but last touch by Hope. Camel inbounds underneath their own basket. Shot clock did reset because it was off the rim on that shot attempt by Scott. And Hope's had a couple of those possessions. They do everything right, of course, the contested three at the end of the shot clock, and they just cannot close out the possession and get the, get the defensive rebound. Kick out, overway to Bolt for three, no. Quillen trying to grab the rebound, no. Dykehouse couldn't get it, overway muscles his way up, no. Quillen with the rebound. Wow, great job by Gabe, not fouling. I, I think that was a great wall by Gabe Quillen. Warman back the other way. Good defense by Wrestler goes out of bounds. Last touched by Calvin. It'll stay with the Flying Dutchman. Bill Saul knocking the scores table right in front of us. And now Greg Mitchell, I think, realizes how big this possession is. Going to take a 30-second timeout. Bill Saul wanted to foul. So he's going to let the officials know. 
Let's reset the scene, Drew. You see it right there. 2.20 left to go. It's a four-point game. Hope has just clawed their way back to this four-point margin. Two possession games, 60-56, and the Flying Dutchman will have the ball to inbounds underneath their own basket. Yeah, this is a huge possession. I mean, they did the job fighting off the second, third chance opportunity by Kelvin. Great job of Gabe Quillen walling up on the bigger overway. Huge stop. Now, I think on this offensive possession, you got to get, you know, TJ McKenzie or Dykehouse with the basketball, maybe coming off a pick and roll, get Quillen up, bring overway up, get him away from the basket, try to open that lane up for your guards to penetrate or drop off, which we've seen a couple times earlier in the second half to Quillen. So, you got to get overway moving. Uh, away from the basket if possible. We saw it earlier with the guards penetrating and then a dunk to Wiggering. I like what you were saying though on McKenzie maybe on the wing with Wiggering crashing from the opposite side because he's such a good finisher around the rim. Yep, and you don't have to rush. I mean, there's plenty of time. Only down four now. You've battled to get back in this game. So, work for a very good shot. Not just the average shot. you got to wait. Work for a great shot. 20 on the shot clock now. Warman inbounds. McKenzie, as they throw it out high to Wiggerink, was in the left corner. Now back to Warman left wing. They go down to Wiggerink. Wiggerink gets Boltland up. Lots of contact, no call. Wrestler comes up with a steal, though. Luca Wrestler, and now Coach Saul say, let's spread it out and take some time a little bit. Let's get the look we want. Yeah, great job, Luca Wrestler, just having a nose for the basketball. Strong hands in there, just taking it for Tanner Wiggerink. I get Keza, offset left, high screen from Overway. Shot clock down to 11, penetrates, kicks out, wrestler for three, got it! Luca Wrestler right from the Knights bench! What a sweet glimpse, Luca Wrestler doing it on the defensive end, and then hitting the huge three in front of his bench. Lead is seven, Warman trying to answer, kicks out, Wiggering fakes the three, down the lane, contact, oh, a block and count it! Oh, Bill Saul is furious. Gabe Quillen went down, but the block is going to be called against Calvin. Bill Saul pleading his case. What a move by the senior Wiggering. It's a good move. Again, I, the block charge call really hard on the officials. I thought Utena had position. I thought he was established outside of the arc, but three-point play. Tanner Wiggering coming in, making his presence felt after being in foul trouble sitting quite a bit of the second half. Dane Harvey has to come in. And was that the fifth on Egekeza? I think it is. We will double check that at the scores table. Dane Harvey in the lineup now for Calvin. 135 left to go, the lead is five, and in one here, Wiggering, nothing but nylon. Boy, is he coming up big. That's 10 now for him. After a quiet game for most of the way. And now Bill Saul wants a timeout. 128 left to go on the game clock. 24 on the shot clock as Harvey brought it into the front court. He wants a full timeout. Full timeout. Calvin, I tell you what, with that full time out of the court, we'll step this out as well. We got a four point game, 128 left to go on this one. Stick around, we've got much more action to come from Van Nord Arena. And you're watching it all live tonight on the Calvin Sports Network. Where will the next revolutionary idea come from? That next breakthrough in scientific research? Or that next literary masterpiece? At Kelvin University, you can dream bigger, think deeper, aim higher. Our world-class faculty push students to keep asking hard questions and never settle for the status quo. Become part of the solution to the world's big problems. Be well, to understand this rivalry, Drew, let me throw this stat out. Over 210 games played in this rivalry. This is number 211 tonight. Bolt down low, overway, right block goes up, and he was fouled. 
They get the call they were looking for. Will it be Quillen or will it be Wiggerink? It is going to be Wiggerink, and his night is done. That's number five. Tanner Wiggerink, the product out of West Ottawa. But think about this, 210 games played. Hope leads the series 109 to 101, so that's tight. Hope has outscored Calvin over those 210 games by 51 points, which works out to a difference of a half point per game. And here we sit, it's a four point game once again. Yeah, Bill. this is this is what it's about. Be anticipated, this was a pretty evenly matched game and it's living up to the hype. So Jalen Overway, two shots coming up for the big man. And they are big, both teams now double bonus on the rest of the way. First free throw, good. He's got 13 now to lead the Knights. 19 points per game is average and just under 10 rebounds, almost a double-double for the big man. Sophomore out of Holland, Christian. Second one, bends the knees on the way, rattles it home. That's what you expect from your prime time player in crunch yeah, time. Nice looking shot. What a luxury to be able to trust your big guy to step up and make big time free throws coming down the stretch. Of Leads all scores in this one. Warman dribbling his way down, turn around jumper, wrestler held his ground, left it short, rebound overway. Now Calvin gonna play a little keep away if they can. Jordan Scott gotta get it across the timeline and wisely they take a timeout. They were close. Marcus Bolt, the senior play right there with one minute exactly left to go. Six point game, still two possessions, 65-59. I think all they have left is a full timeout. That's all they have left, a full timeout. So time out of the floor, we'll step aside as well. Six point game, 65-59, Calvin over Hope. We'll come back with a finish after this on the Calvin Sports Network. Let's take a look at the lineups. Bill Saul taking that timeout. You got Marcus Bolt, good free throw shooter in there. We know about Overway, but usually big guys tough to touch in this situation because the pressure full court with the guards. But you got Wrestler in there, you got Harvey in there, you got Jordan Scott in there, all good free throw shooters. And ball handlers. Small lineup for Coach Saul. Warman, McKenzie, Dykehouse in there to give chase, along with Wager and Quinlan. In the front court, shot clock at 15. Jordan Scott's got it. Freshman has played well in his first Calvin Hope game. Knocked away though, Warman with the quick hands and Hope gets it back. Scott just got a little too deep that time. Good knock away by Warman. Over to Wager, three point specialist. That's way off the mark, got knocked down, no call. Up ahead, Jordan Scott. Oh, wisely pulls it out the freshman. And now takes some time off and is fouled. Grab with 28.5 seconds left. He could have gone to the hole, but Bill Saul saying smart play. Made Dykehouse come over and follow him and ran a few more seconds off. Yeah, a few more seconds, but I think if you got that breakaway, you got to take the easy two, right? I mean, two seconds or two points, I right. think. Take the layup, but hey, he's had a he's had a good game. Gordon Scott, that is. Just a freshman still learning. Has had some turnovers, but has made some Winning plays as well. Talk about winning plays. Stepped up and made some big free throws here in the second half. He's got 11 on the night now. What an answer for them at the point guard position. Right now coming off the bench, I don't think it'll stay that way as the season goes on. I know they like Wrestler as well. Second one, up and good. Jordan Scott, spotlight not too big for him. Oh, I think he's only gonna continue to earn more and more minutes as the season goes on. Quinlan, wild shot from three, but they had to hurry down to 20 seconds. Marcus Bolt in, now a foul committed. Will walk to the other end. And Coach Saul starting to feel a little bit now. 
fifth season at Calvin, but 19th season as a college men's basketball coach. Remember, Spira State and Northern Michigan, the GLIAC, before coming here. 1994 Calvin grad, great player in his own right. And he and Coach Mitchell, who played at Hope, have had some battles. First free throw good for Marcus Bolt. I know for Bill Saul, this will be a sweet one. Hasn't always come easy against no, Hope, especially not. here. Yeah, you talk about losing four straight on your home floor. I mean, that's pressure, and it's going to feel good to snap that streak and take another step in the right direction of winning another MIAA regular season championship. Calvin backs off, just wants the time to run as Quinlan puts it in. 9.3 seconds left, quick timeout for Coach Mitchell. Full timeout, we'll keep it right here. So after those two free throws by the senior Marcus Bolt made on the other end, He's got 13 now to help lead the way. And it's just like you play it out, right? I mean, Calvin was the MIAA regular season champs a year ago. I believe they finished at 23 and five. And then of course you have Hope, who loses to them the first time. And folks, it was 81-49. Even Coach Mitchell apologized to us the next time he saw us. said, sorry I didn't give you a better game to broadcast. And then they come back and they win the rematch here at Van Nord Arena, 65-57, and then beat Calvin again 10 days later because Calvin being the regular season champs, they were the host of the conference tournament in the championship game, 61-54. And they're gonna get that opportunity again in just about 10 days, a rematch of this game on their home floor. So they'll be motivated, they'll make some adjustments. They make a few more shots if you're yep. Coach Mitchell. But uh, his guys battle. 69-61, Calvin inbounds on the far end. Hope, I think, just going to back off and let him dribble it out. Final four seconds, final three. And let the celebration begin for the maroon and gold. Coach Mitchell, Coach Saul shaking hands along with the respective assistant coaches at midcourt. And what a ball game here tonight. It wasn't easy, Hope with a better second half to make it interesting there, but Calvin wins it by eight, partner 69-61 yeah, the final. themselves, two people behold at your Hope College and battled back with just a too little too late in this one and got away at the end. Luca Wrestler, that scene where he got the steal, then knocked down the deep triple to make it go from four to seven. It was a huge turning point in this ball game. We're going to take a timeout right now. We'll come back with post-game recaps and final numbers, and also we'll talk to the winning side. Marcus Bolt will join us, senior for Calvin, head coach Bill Saul. All coming up. Stay with us after this timeout here on the Calvin Sports Network. Give us time to get the scores. Big E's Sports Grill, your next destination for any occasion with incredible entertainment and amazing food that makes you want to come back for more. Family memories are made. Where sports are enjoyed and friends gather. Cheers to good times, great friends, and a place where the game's always on. Only at Big E's. This summer, engage in meaningful music making and learning at No Crest Music Camp. No Crest Music Camp is a week-long summer day camp at Calvin University for musicians entering grades 7 through 12. Here, you'll develop your musical skills through different kinds of learning and performance opportunities, all within a welcoming, inclusive community. Spend a week learning from outstanding music educators in Calvin's state-of-the-art classroom and performance spaces. Interact with peers who are just as passionate about music as you are. Perform in such large ensembles as choir, concert band, jazz band, music theater, and string orchestra. And expand your musical knowledge through your choice of classes, like music in the movies or West African drumming. You emerge from your week at camp invigorated and inspired by the knowledge and experiences you've gained. Join us at No Crest Music Camp this summer.
Don't forget head coach Bill Saul coming up with Marcus Bolt, our player and coach interview. Once we get the rate cap here, but the celebration going on at midcourt, student section is hyped. And we talked about it, Drew. Calvin, 11 point advantage at the break, 34 23. Holtbound scores him in the second half, 38 35. But Calvin prevails by eight, 69 61. Take us to the leading scores in this one on both sides. Yeah, let's look at Hope College first. Tanner Wickerink with 10. Gabe Quillen, 12. Marcus Foreman, 10. Justice Mims, 9. And TJ McKenzie with 10. So uh, four guys in double figures, one with nine, Justice Mims. So good balance for Holt, but just 35% shooting on the night. That uh, kind of haunted them all night. And uh, just two of 22 from beyond the arc, 9%. So on the winning side, Kelvin University, Uchenna Egekeza knocking joining the thousand point club eight points for him tonight congrats to him on a thousand points in his uh, Kelvin career Owen Bernardo with 11 Jalen Overway with 14 Jordan Scott with 12 and Marcus Bolt had a nice game with 13. Calvin with the win improves to 15 and 1 overall 5 and 0 still perfect in the MIAA conference play Hope with their first loss in MIAA play at 4 and 1 and they dropped to 12 in 4 overall Always fun partner will look to do it again in 10 days January 27th with a doubleheader with the men's and women I can't wait all day hoops in the gym rivalry series gets no better He's Drew Knight, so the best courtside. I've got more to do when we come back after this break. We'll talk to a very happy head coach, Bill Saul, along with one of his senior leaders, Marcus Bolt. That's what we continue with our live coverage from Van Nord Arena here on the Calvin Sports Network. I love the NABE scholarship program because I just love how personal these scholarships are for the alumni and for the students. Being a student who grew up in foster care and then getting a scholarship for students who were in foster care and being able to connect with that donor and see the love and the passion that they have for me and being able to resonate with me and what I've gone through. God opened doors that I didn't even know were there. I'm at Kelvin and my legacy is starting here. You see that? That's when I realized we can't let another year go by. I think we're good. Okay, let's go. Mom, you know where's the wrapping paper? We need to wrap something for Grandma. Oh, uh, yeah. Ready? Yeah. This is the plan to finally connect with our family's heritage. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and spend your life living. I have wanted to be a teacher since I was in preschool. As a teacher, I know that I am called to not only make an impact on the students that I teach, but to help them come up with creative solutions to be change agents themselves that Calvin has instilled in me to be an agent of renewal in this world. And how can they help be a problem solver? How can they creatively come up with solutions to better not only the space that they are involved in, but the space that others are involved in as well? Welcome back here to Van Nord Arena. Brett Bikita joined by senior leader Marcus Bolt. 13 points to help lead the way for the Knights along with a very happy head coach Bill Saul. Marcus, let's start with you. The atmosphere was electric. What's it like now in your senior season? And to get the monkey off the back because Hope has come in here the last four times and beat you at Van Nord Arena. Oh, it's awesome for sure. I mean, every time we play here for this game, it's just it's awesome to see the crowd. And I think our fans did a great job of making noise and making it a good environment for us. And yeah, like you said, it's huge to get a first win at home. And, was something that we talked about before the game is something that we really wanted to achieve. So it feels good to get it done. How big was it for you? I thought in the second half, Jalen Overway doesn't get enough credit for being a good passer as a big man. He knew the double team was coming all night long. He did a great job of finding guys like you. And then you guys were cutting the basket or open for threes. Yeah, I know that was part of our game plan was we knew they were going to send a pretty hard double. And Jalen did a great job of sticking to what we planned out and finding open guys. And we were lucky enough to make a couple shots down the stretch. So. Uh, props to Jalen. He did a great job passing the ball and played huge for us. Enjoy this one, but we'll do it again in 10 days, yep, right? Yep, sounds good. Thank All you. right, thank you so much. Marcus, stay with us here. Head coach Bill Saul, I know what it means to you. I know what it means to Coach Mitchell, the rivalry there. You guys both played for these schools, but, man, what a win for you guys at home here tonight. 
Yeah, it was a huge win. I, you know, I, I thought our guys really, really played with a lot of grit, really defended incredibly well. Um, you know, here in the month of January, we've been missing that a little bit, right? Um, from where we were in December. So it was just really refreshing to see that. And of course, you know, playing in this atmosphere, how can you not but play hard? Um, but, uh, you know, man, it, the credit to Hope is always right. I mean, it was a battle down the stretch all the way through. Um, you know, an ugly basketball game, but that's when we're at our best, right? I mean, we, we like to muck it up a little bit, and, uh, you know, we certainly did, I think, a good job of that tonight. I thought your leaders really stepped up big. I mean, Jalen knocking down his free throws for a big man, a guy like Marcus. I mean, right, you got to lean on those guys. Eka Keza, another one in these games. They've been through these battles, and down the stretch, I thought you got the ball in their hands, and whether it was a free throw or a bucket, they came through. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Uchenna, huge cut. You know, Marcus, a really, really big take to the basket, you know, and then that one possession. On the timeout, we were going to get the ball to Jay, you know, a little bit of a risky pass by Bolt, but, you know, <laughs> we got the catch, but, I mean, that's what we wanted to get to because we really felt comfortable at getting into the free throw line. And, um, you know, overall, like I said, just I was really pleased with our efforts, and I thought it was outstanding. I tell you what, Duke and North Carolina has nothing on this rivalry. <laughs> it was fun. We've enjoyed broadcasting. And like I said to Marcus, we'll do it again in 10 days, right? Yeah. And then don't forget, trying in the mix with everybody, trying too. Trying in the mix with everybody, too. It's, it's uh, you know, I think this is one of those years where you got three – all the teams in the MIAA are good, but, man, you got three really, really good basketball teams battling out. I'll let you enjoy in the locker room, right. guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. As we wrap things up here, it was an eight-point victory. Calvin gets it done tonight over their rival, 69-61, and one win closer. It's now 109-102 to in favor of the Flying Dutchman. And as I mentioned, that doubleheader coming up January 27th, the women early here at Van Nord Arena with the Calvin Sports Network, and we invite you that night to go over to the Hope Sports Network for the men's side and the rematch at DeVos Fieldhouse. Drew Knights and I will have the call on both. Can't say enough about our crew tonight. Matt Kaczynski, our director, both SIDs outstanding. Jeff Bebas running around here for Calvin, our host athletic director, Alan Babbitt, with his help with our game preparation as well, and Nate Porter, our producer, along with all of our video camera folks and crew. Excellent job here. Hope you enjoyed it. As once again, the final score here from Van Nord Arena tonight. Calvin on the men's side, winning over Hope, 69-61, the final. There are just different feelings about this game. It's not a regular game. It's a game of passion. It's one of great respect. Well, we wish you a good afternoon today. One of the oldest rivalries in the Midwest, certainly, as Calvin College will host Hope. Great turnout that we have in here tonight. Uh, palpable excitement. And a special hello to all the people watching throughout the country. The great game has arrived again this year. It's Calvin and Hope. Strap yourself in. Here we go. Gets it. Long shot by Henning. If you're fortunate enough to achieve what you believe and win the game, then it becomes bragging rights. Huge block there from Overway. And a dunk from him. Wow. So an Overway with a dunk. Two-handed slam. Lays it up and off the backboard in.